Kings of Leon. California waiting. Steve, the public have been waiting for us to return. Well, that's true enough. All right. Yeah. They had the best of. Oh, last I bet that week. Was a joy. They had Camfield and us without Carl the week before, but it's uh, been a while since we've all been together. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant, and over there, with his little sunburnedy baldy head, little Carl Pilkington. Whee! All right. Yeah. That, that wasn't Steve slapping me head then, by the way. <laughs> no, that was just him clapping right. at, like, Steve Wright in the afternoon. It's a great cause show. He's, cause he's so- it is a good show. Yeah. He's so pleased that we're- we're a posse. Yeah. And we're all back together. I s three holidays Carl's had this year. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. I'd love to have three holidays. You've got to start putting the work no, in there. I had two it? holidays then. No, you had three holidays. You went away with, uh, Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, well that doesn't count. It does count. If you book- if you book two weeks off the firm, you go away and you go, how was your holiday going? Well, I didn't really count, it wasn't a really good holiday. Can I have them days back, please? <laughs> you- yeah. oh. My New Year's resolution is to be nicer to you, but- Well talk done, sense. you've already broken that. No, but talk sense. Talk sense. You've had three holidays this year, and I'm just saying, you- you're in your thirties now, and thirties is when you should be really putting the work in- That's true enough. To reap the benefits in your forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and a hundred. <laughs> Carl, what's your new year resolution? What about think before you speak? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth- I mean, See, I'm allowed to laugh. I'm allowed to laugh at things other people say, Carl. That one- <laughs> That is a good suggestion! How was your holiday, Carl? Uh, it was alright. Right, brilliant. <laughs> but that- I don't see- on the kind of- on these- on the ratio of, uh, good to bad in Carl's mind, that might be amazing, cause we never- It might be amazing, might it? Of anything. I'll tell you what, can we have, uh, you know, a cracking little tune, and then come back and hear about Carl's holiday? Oh, I'd love to do that. Let's really. keep it tight. Let Me Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. Now I can't put my finger on it, but that doesn't sound like the original. And no. it's off a compilation. It sounded a bit fast. I think the vocal was slightly different. If anyone can- you know, put me out of misery. I, I think it might be in a session of the time or something. Carl, is it a New Year resolution for you, another one? Uh, maybe when we ask you to get a song, get the original, uh, single version. I could be and wrong, but- And uh, session. Yeah, it does seem different, doesn't it? Very odd. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just remember it wrongly. Mm. But anyway, that's XFM for you. 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton. Carl, you went to Lanzarote. Mm. People said don't go to Lanzarote. They told you it was Lanza Grotty, they told you were they right or wrong? They were right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a bit ropey, yeah. Is it why? Just, uh, out there. <laughs> if it wasn't for the- for the volcano they had, it'd be knackered. <laughs> <laughs> that's their- that's their big draw, is that's, it? That's- that's it, basically, that's all they've got going for them. When you landed, was it really hot? Did you- initially, were you quite excited? You were thinking this uh, is it okay? It was warm, it was, uh, you know, we can't complain about the weather, the weather, weather was alright. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what I went for, but it'd be nice if- if there just was something else. Yeah. What did you do all day then? Did you read your original book? Uh, no. I didn't- didn't read that. I read that book. Do you know the book that I bought and all the chapters were messed up? Oh yeah. But I, I bought a better version of that. Alright. And I read that. Excellent. And then, uh Did it make more sense in order? Yeah, a lot easier to follow. Yeah. And then we went- went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got thirty-six of them. To look at. <laughs> How many do you look at before you realise that you've, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? Yeah. And then when you got to the eight, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, yeah. getting some builders. No, seriously though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what- well, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than the hole. It's in... more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, volcanoes were made a lot longer no, ago no, than no. 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. <laughs> what would you suggest? Well, How can they all... fill it in? It's joined, it's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is- uh, it was The a, big it was... plates of the earth are all joined, all the magma is joined. With the- with the trade centre thing, that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in 1730. No, you misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, can you fill in the volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the- the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. 
It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're- like a carpet. Put it in the holes, the holes are there ready, just push it all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ah! I'm saying. Uh, uh, what, um, what exactly is there then? Is it just a kind of moon-like kind of surround with just kind of dust and rock? That's exactly- and... what, you see, I was there when the Mars thing oh, went wrong. Yeah. I would have just sent a camera crew there. <laughs> filmed a bit of that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And say, here we are, this yeah. is it. Yeah. Ignore the little coffee shop in the background, yeah. right? <laughs> this is Mars, because that's- that's where it's like, just loads of dust. Yeah. Uh, holes everywhere. <laughs> Side it up. Anything little little round-headed aliens yeah, complaining. Yeah. Winging. Just, just like Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, is there any- what's the best bit about the holiday? Come on, pretend you're Judith Chalmers. I have been doing. I would have done all that, I would have said that. Don't bother. Well, I mean, the hotel was good. Yeah? That was alright. What uh, was that like? It's alright. Just, you know, clean. That's all you want, isn't it? See, that's not quite what Judith Chalmers does. She doesn't go, what's the hotel like? All right, yeah, clean, innit? All right. Well, what was it like? Was it, what, what was it? Three star? Four star? Does that have a swimming pool? What was yeah, the room I'd, like? Yeah, had a swimming pool and that. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if, you know, I think it was one of the better ones on the island. Okay. Um. Nightlife? Uh, Clubs, wasn't really, bars? wasn't really any, there was a bar, there was some bands playing. Yeah. Uh, not very good. Um, food. Food got a bit boring. Yeah. It was always the same food every night, but they sort of themed it and made out as if it was different. So, like, on Mexican night, it'd be chicken with a nacho on it. <laughs> right. Right. And Chinese night, sort of chicken with a little prawn cracker on it and stuff. <laughs> sure. But that got a bit boring. Um, that's me just turning on my phone, uh, because I want to read to you a text. Right. That I got from Carl. I think you sort of sum up the holiday in in this text, don't you? Do you remember I it? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Let's Interesting. What did uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, make of it? Uh, Similar view to you? That they should fill in the, uh, the holes? Yeah, it's just that thing, you see, I went on a coach trip, right, and you go and see the volcanoes. Like I say, there's 36 of them. Yeah. Um, which, you know, how many do you need? And, and when, when we're on the coach going round all these volcanoes, <laughs> the fella on the front's going and, uh, look out your left window at the moment and there's a, there's a volcano. And, uh, if you quickly look out of the, the right hand side there, there's, a, there's another one. <laughs> right. And on the left, it's just like, alright, we've seen it. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, yeah. that tri I mean, we'll talk about that trip in a bit. Right, this is the text I got from Carl, right? Alright. Been up to a volcano. Been in some den ar dead artist's house who built his house in the lava. They said they would show me science with volcanoes, but all they did was chuck some water in a in a hole, and it shot up in the air. No dwarves in the canteen, no scousers here, but there is a Swede woman with a big head. She looks effing gormless with a cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So a little reference there to... A Swede woman? What's, what's that mean? Do you mean Swedish? Yeah. Or she looked like a vegetable? No, uh, a uh, Swedish woman. Hmm. But they've all got sort of... Quite big bill, aren't they? And Sweet. I sent I sent him a text. Oh well, it's just good to be on holiday because you know I'm working. Uh, he sent back. So am I. Just been watching Sky News. There is a school for monkeys who want to get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news for later? <laughs> Corazon by Tim Burgess. I can't get enough of that. I love that chorus. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. But it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's alright. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, trying to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, well, I not really think oh, much. It's all but, like, one, really. one big sort of like work That's thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the things that annoyed me was like, you, you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, you know, there wasn't much going on on the- No, there any crabs to throw sand that, was no there? No crabs or anything, they wouldn't mm. bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little, little trip. That's when I saw the- the volcanoes and that, 36 of them. <laughs> uh, so, we go on the trip, 
And the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on, if you go on a sort of a package thing, mm -hmm. they have these trips, right? And you pay about forty odd quid and they give you some wine, so it make it feel like you, you're getting your money's worth. But, uh... How many of these trips have you been on then? Uh, Loads. Ooh, probably about twelve. Four. More holidays than I've had. Go on. Uh, I'll, uh... Yeah, so anyway, on. so you're on the, on the coach, right? And they take you, for the volcanoes, they took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right? There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's, it like, like I say, it's like Mars, <laughs> but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right? And, uh, they sort of drop you off and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at. Uh, and a coffee shop over there. And you know, for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's a backhander, definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they go there and they, they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah. yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. Have you How ever? much was the coffee? Was it probably about, probably price? about three, uh, each euro, so I think it was three fifty. Sure. Yeah, Which yeah, is, yeah. I don't know what, that's about two and a half quid. Yeah, they stitched you up. Well, I remember we were on a, it was a family trip to France once, we went to Paris, we got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was. Coach trip, that's quite a long coach trip, and at one point we were thinking, this is, oh, we're on the motorway, this is fine, we're making good progress. Suddenly we came off the motorway, we must have gone like 40 minutes out of our way, end up in this street, this street, completely empty, little French town, and uh, it's piped outside this, what appears to be a restaurant, and a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat, he's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent, he goes, hello, oh, thank you very much, top of the morning, good morning, hello, um, uh, come in, we've got food, drink, eh, go upstairs, we've got rooms if you want to have a rest, eh, or play around, no, it's up to you, and uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant, and this one family went, well, we don't want to go in the restaurant, we brought sandwiches, we just want to get to the port, we're not interested, and they said, well, you've got to come in the restaurant, and well, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant, so the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach, <laughs> so this family... We're locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in, and I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fin with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> and, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there, looking, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, uh, that, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside, and it was extraordinary, because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get into the <laughs> restaurant. Perfect. And he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists. So there was like pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall. It was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style. It's absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I, I, it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre because it was so out of the way. Did it come, did that come before the coach, uh, sort of scam or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about, but, um. But, yeah, that is, it's, it's, yeah. Do we do, is that going on in this country yeah, with French sure and German tourists? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, they say, I, I, I yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring 30 people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If you know, you got your favourites because you don't have to. The, the coach drivers pretty much god on those things because that's what we don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here there's other stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this. Well, country. not really. Not if you're going from uh, 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 London to Manchester, you could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's, oh, there's places yeah. with nothing to do or see. It's that, what well, those, those, those attractions, they're all, there's loads of them in America, but there's a, there's a few here like, you know, Sheep World, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you go out to Gloucester, and there's a town, it's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's, that's it, it's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going, it's a quid to see it. There it is, right? I went to, um, mm. I know it's quite a big, I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But, I, when did Shire Horses become so, so popular that they got their own theme parks. Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum for everything. Yeah, possibly so. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could, you could think of something that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain, because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. Mm. But this so, is, do people keep coming around going, I hear you've got a Shire horse, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Well, I can't, people come all the time to see my Shire horse. You should horses. get another one because I'd probably pay double <laughs> for it. I'd pay good money to see your Shire horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shire <laughs> horses. <laughs> I know. Have you seen them? They don't do anything. They're not like monkeys. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not like monkeys. Elegant. No. Creatures, but you look but at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're not they, doing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. You pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had a, like, one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, Without... open a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Was it interesting spaghetti? Spaghetti in different don't shapes? Don't know, I didn't go. I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> sure. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, but out of ten then, um, what, what would you give it out of ten? Well, all in all, food, point. food, location, right. relaxation, you know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's six. Okay, brilliant. Six, yeah. Next week, where are you going next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're not on holiday next week. Uh, Go away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. She Five holidays. Play records. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. Cheering breaks. Mind over money. XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. Stephen Merchant. Little Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. A couple of emails. Different people have um, have visited various uh, tourist attractions. Oh yeah. Uh, let me see. Who's this from? Uh, I'm not quite sure. But, uh, thanks very much indeed for it. Uh, so, uh, there's a link here. It's apparently in Devon. Barometer World. Brilliant. Um, it's the world of barometers. It was established in 1979. And, By uh, one bloke who yeah. had a lot and yeah. thought, I can, I can <laughs> charge a quid <laughs> yeah. for this. Definitely. Here's the, Out uh, of his own house, probably. Converted back scuttle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. not, that's not a euphemism for a sexual <laughs> act. Um, but look at the, uh, the webpage here, Rick. There's a picture of a beautiful barometer being held by a beautiful lady. Lovely. Who's definitely his daughter. Yes. Definitely. Lovely. Come on, Kathy. <laughs> Hold that. Dad, no. Come on. Get, undo your top a little bit. Dad! <laughs> definitely made to do that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that slight look of I hope no one I know sees. Yeah. Just checks yeah. out Barometer World. Yeah. <laughs> barometer World. Yeah, that's available. You want to check that out? www.barometerworld.com. That's now, the, uh... barometers, now, do, well, one, do they work? They have to do Two, with checking, is it the, the, the air pressure? Well, it, well everything, air... but I, I think that's what it's based on, isn't it? Sort of low and high pressure, so it's gonna rain, it's not gonna rain. Yeah. Or gonna be windy, or, but I wonder how accurate they are. I think in the days before, um, satellite sort of, uh, weather surveillance systems, probably essential. Yeah. Nowadays. As essential as hanging some seaweed out by the back door? <laughs> probably. I think yeah. it's probably similar. I think it's the same one as holding a needle and thread over a pregnant woman. <laughs> if it goes clockwise, it'd be a boy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the thing about a barometer is how, um, how far into the future can it predict? Exactly. How do you know? If it's a case of you may as well stick your head out the window to see if it's raining. Exactly. This barometer goes, uh, it goes, oh, it's gonna it'll be windy and rainy. When? The barometer goes, soonish? <laughs> yeah. So, can't say, but so, it will, it will, well, within the seven days. I don't want to be specific, because you'll have me. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah I don't, but I mean, you know, I'm just a barometer, I'm not really, I'm not really <laughs> a can't weather really person. The information. Yeah, brilliant. What, how, what's in there that's, uh, what's what happening? In there, what's what chemicals are being affected? How does it work? I've I no don't idea. know. I I assume it's probably something. Wait, a minute, let me email Barometer World. Now what could it be? It could be quite it, interesting. It could be mercury that's based on a sort of temperature. It goes up with. Oh no, it's not temperature, is it, Barometer? It's pressure. Mm. So uh, it, it's it's probably just very fine. It's like a fine, very very fine needle, isn't it? This is almost as embarrassing as last time we were on. We couldn't figure out what the name of the leader of China was. Was it the King of China? <laughs> the Prince of China? Oh, uh, this is where we, uh, were trying to imagine what it'd be like if all the Chinese people at once jumped up and down yeah. and made a big tidal wave. Enormous tidal wave. But if you do know what the name of the leader of China is, we don't mean the name of the particular person in charge, but if it's a King of China, the Emperor of China, the, the Chancellor wait, of China, well, it the Prime Minister of China. Emperor, didn't it? That was Japan. Yeah, this is it. I don't know what's the big guy in charge. Is he still the chairman? I know Chairman Mao was important. I think he was just yeah. the chairman. I think he just governed all the big meetings. Yeah. I don't know. He just kept the minutes. Head Chinaman? Head Chinaman. The major Chinaman. Top, ch the top Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> We're the the number one Chinaman. We, uh, do you know what? We're gonna be honest here. We, we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China. <laughs> yeah. It's embarrassing. But if you've got any interesting facts about China, then uh, email yeah. in ricky, ricky .gervais at xfm.co.uk. Also, I imagine the email address to use if you're going to take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did raise an interesting fact. Um, I'm researching, I'm doing a show called Politics and I was researching yeah. and there's a thing about, um, uh, what, sweatshops. Online? Yeah, no, no, no. Sweatshops, um, uh, like, uh, Nike, uh, there's these facts, right? And, um, uh, that these, these people get, like, you know, a few cents an hour and the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for, uh, a Chinese woman 
to earn his 5.2 billion, she'd have to work, um, eight hours a day, seven days a week, for 10,000 years. <laughs> but Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They, they obviously don't want to. Exactly. They I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy, lazy, Rick. <laughs> Ian Jury in the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to, uh, Cumbria on your, um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just use one then. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Do you yeah. have any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premiere. Uh, premiere. Premier. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. But, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if there's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think so, so it's some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten. Right. One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's... Right. That does seem a bit higher, though, doesn't it? I thought it was- I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. I don't think so. I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, anything. But what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? <laughs> Cause you know they go out late, so if- if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it, they're not gonna get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all asleep. But if they're out at, say, one in the morning... Wow. Well, it's gonna be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, The Killing of Georgie? Mm. A little fellow, a little gay fellow goes out and, uh, he gets, um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric, it says, Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat? And he's closing them before he goes out. No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised something. Maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out clubbing, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo, he's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna, he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah. Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have <laughs> you ever met a gay I person? I mean, the way we talk about these, it's like, yeah. have we ever met Chinese people? Uh. I've seen them. I've seen them out there wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever No, it, now here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a- no, there was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. I couldn't really- <laughs> couldn't get close to her, she was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right then, this is where I, uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Sort of being the operative phrase, eh? Yeah. Let's uh, see how we read this clue. Yeah. This is gonna sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue uh, number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde's Chinese, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was illegal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry? Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing, or is this- This, this is, is the clue. Uh, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. Will you just leave the entrance to my garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count, because I know what it is. And what was- sorry, what were the initials? What were the initials? GG. Correct. Yeah, right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist, cos I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, no, when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it, right? GG. Okay. Right? <coughs> Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want, right? That's yeah. T. It's another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one, we were sharing out the mail sheet. Well, that doesn't count either. Can we, we just fuck Nick? I know, what, I know what that is, I know what that is. I don't care, we'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three, <laughs> we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. 
Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again. Well, you leave the entrance to my garden alone. There's yeah. not messing about with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. And the last one was sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best one, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. <laughs> Alright, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Just oh, this is Don't worry pathetic. about it. Have we got any problems? Just, uh, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish, the clues don't work, the show, it's, I mean, this is pathetic. Play record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. <laughs> Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time, we've still got an hour left, boys. Hey! Luckily. Brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese, people f as fascinated yeah. as we are. <laughs> I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think, Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were- We're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It is it's, not. It's, no, if all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, that, yeah, but that, 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 they'd, that be, they'd be having babies, um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be, would they be walking and checking <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's, that is, yeah. That's... I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhirter or Norris, whoever's, who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget, Norris, I think. Norris, right. I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. At 1.2 billion. Little Chinese fellas, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the through Tibet. Uh, or? I think it's the, I, I think it's the, uh, Gate Nine Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St Petersburg, right. right? And they go and walking <laughs> and shaggy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So, so they claim. So, you yeah, well. We know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when it. these, th when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? I'll leave it. Carl, just, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because a lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. <laughs> I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, <laughs> it was. <laughs> She didn't die. That was a, that was her secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she, uh, she was, like, <coughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two thirds odd. of our life, don't we? No, but we she, she was, like, awake and that, and then she'd go, oh, I'm out of bed, and then that'd be it for two days. Talking of sleeping. Uh, uh, oh, man alive, I went to see the last part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Why? Well, it's like a family thing now. Every every Christmas, we, my family and I have been going to see the Lord of the Rings, the next instalment. It's like a family thing. What will you do if they keep making them? Oh, I tell you, I've wasted now about ten hours of my life with that tripe. You can never get that back. You can back. never get that back. That's what Peter Jackson owes me. Ten hours now he owes me of my life. It is absolute drivel. Well, I know. I, we've said this before, I don't want to harp on again about it, but I cannot fathom why everyone is so excited and loves these films so much. Like you say, people review saying it's the best film ever. ever. I think this is the greatest movie I'll ever see. And I don't... It's like they go, oh, but look at all the fight sequences. But Tolkien being up there in literature, like, you know what I mean? It's sort of like Shakespeare. Tolkien. No! No! <laughs> No, 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 no. what is it that he's writing about exactly? I don't know. Little midget fellas who can't get shoes. <laughs> Wonder, I mean, I've got big feet. I've got size 14. <laughs> I can get shoes. Oh, God. So but not know, for men But order. I know, it, it is like, it's like, um, uh, 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 Harry Potter taken seriously. Yeah. But I know who's watching it. It's like these people who are watching it are obviously nerds. People who live in Forbidden Planet. They love it. They can't believe their luck. It's but that's like, the core audience, but it's obviously bigger than that. But then, but then it's also people who can think they have a go, like menopause of women thinking, well I'll write a book then. <laughs> the, 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 Gl Glodplin came into the cave. <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and they're, and they're sort of like 13 year old sons who've never shown an interest in anything except glue, now <laughs> yeah. writes Orc <laughs> yeah, exactly. on his exercise book, and so they're loving it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it, oh, It's God. uniting, bringing people together, but at the end, right, I mean, it's taken them now, like, nine hours to get from one part of Middle Earth to the end, to the other end, so they can get, destroy the ring, the evil ring. Did they do a line? Was it, I don't know what they, 
Well, like little Chinese so. fellas. And, um, it's taken them nine hours of their time and my life, as yeah. well, to get there. And, uh, at the end, they, they all say goodbye. Did they do it in real it? time? Why oh. didn't they edit it? <laughs> oh. I mean, that's what it felt like. It really, <laughs> it can't have, it must have taken them less time, you know, within the sort of logic of the book to get there than it did for me to watch it. And, um, in the end, they, they sort of say goodbye to each other and they all hug. So there's like, you know, there's little midget one, you know, Frido, Fr Frodo, Frida, saying goodbye to, you know, Bjorn What are they Benny. called in the thing? Because, uh, are they PC in it? Are they called, like, midgets and dwarves? No, they're called, uh, hobbits. Oh, are they? Yeah. So we should call small people hobbits from yes. now on? that's what they are, just to make it kind of topical and they'll like that as well. Give them sort of, you know... So if you see a little, on the way home, if you saw a little... Midget fella. Four foot <laughs> midget fella, just call, say, excuse me, hobbit. Yeah. Okay, that's Call him then. Frodo. <laughs> Good, Frodo. <laughs> He'd like it. He'd love it because everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. They love it. No, but everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. In yeah. the end, if you ever get to the end, they uh, they all hug each other. They say, well, basically Frodo has to say goodbye to all his other little fellas, and so he's <laughs> hugging us. I don't know how many from there are, and he's hugging them, right? And it is the most interminable thing I've ever seen. It's like the music's playing. They look into each other's eyes. He hugs them. He hugs. They pull back. They look at each other again. That's like I will never see each other again. Then he hugs the next one, and the, I was just screaming. I was thinking, hug, just one big group hug. Yeah. Then we can get out of like it. Like an American football team. Exactly. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, knock Not heads. each individual one. Oh. I mean, it's dragging on God. and on and on. And apparently on the DVD, there's like an extra sort of 20 minutes of extra footage of scenes he's cut out. Who's oh. watching this tripe? Uh, Who cares? I don't know. I genuinely, have we, I couldn't- Have we lost some of our popularity by slagging off Lord of the Rings? I don't care. Screw them. If you love it, if you, if you can't live without Lord of the Rings, Screw you. It, I don't want you as a listener. I can't <laughs> fathom it. Really, really, it's not like being, I'm trying to be wayward or controversial. I can't get my head around the popularity. But doesn't Harry Potter annoy you as well, though? Yeah, but it's, at least it's kind of over in an hour and a half. Is it? I haven't seen it. Well, I went I to the toilet three times during the course of the film. Really? It's unbelievable. The woman sat next Sexy to me. Sexy stuff in it, was there? <laughs> 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 Some of those little pixies with the pointed ears. <laughs> it just took me back to, you know, Mr. Spock. Oh. <laughs> All those glorious days. But, um, <laughs> oh, oh, it really is just. I mean, have you seen any of them? You've not bothered. I've seen one, and <sighs> it was long, and I thought it was nicely filmed, and I thought, well, okay, I just get through it. I think I even think, it, you know, uh, it was just a list of oh, and here come the orcs. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay, we see the orcs now. Yeah. But it's like people go oh, look at the amazing <sighs> fight sequences, the amazing immense battles, and it's true. He's got thousands of actors and stuff on horses. Brilliant. But I'm not impressed by good time management. No. Well done, he's got all those people together, he's orchestrated it. Well done. But yeah. he's got, it's got to be more interesting. My friend summed it up. He said the Lord of the Rings films, they're like the film equivalent of an Enya song. Yeah. And that to me is exactly yeah, right. Exactly. Lots of billowing dresses, <laughs> slow <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. musical moments. <laughs> that's good. People that, riding majestically good. on horses. <laughs> Enya. Constantly oh. riding majestically everywhere. Dido's taken over from Enya in that. Well, so. I've got so. a confession to make. Go on. I like that latest Dido song. Oh, play a song. Let me just, I, I know, I, I know, I know, I know. I thought I'd never. I don't Rick, know what to say. On? Let me explain something to you about Dido. Oh God! Biting bottles. Richard Ashcroft on XFM. We've had an email which I think I suppose puts my hatred of Lord of the Rings into perspective. It says, "Yeah, you may have spent ten hours of your life wasting uh, your time with uh, Lord of the Rings, but imagine how many hours of people's lives we, this show, have uh, wasted." For <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I suppose it does. You know, balance. <laughs> Two out. hours uh, a week for exactly. a couple of years. <laughs> we can never give that back. To it's, it's, I know. It says it mounts up, doesn't it? Yeah. We should be doing some kind of community service for people, you know, maybe popping around. Well, this is community service, isn't it? Because Carl, it makes his brain work a little bit, True. and it, you know, it keeps him, keeps him, uh, you know, from going on holiday, <laughs> sort of for two hours a week, which yeah. is good. Uh, we um, spent New Year's Eve together, me and Carl. Oh yeah. It was me and Jane, Carl and Suzanne. Her hair doesn't really look like Dave Hill. I, I must, <laughs> I must confess. Didn't see it when it was done though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had the coat on that you bought her to say sorry though, didn't she? Yeah. And uh, Martin Freeman and his girlfriend Amanda mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 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 Glyn and um, we all went for a meal mm -hmm. and then we all went back to ours and uh, sort of um, saw in the new year and all that and saw the fireworks and then in the wee hours when just the drinking seriously starts, we started playing parlour games mm -hmm. and do you know that game when you go around started off like with, um, pop bands or rock bands, you have to, uh, say a, a, a band and then they have to come up with a band immediately that starts with the letter that your, that your band ended with. Right. So, Suede, E, Erasure, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Go around. Yeah. We did that, right? And then we had to change that because people were sort of, using the, the same ones crop up. So I said, we'll do animals. We're doing animals 
and uh, I gave Carl one. I think Carl panicked. So he had to go, do, do it quite quick. I want to just test it on you. Okay. Um, is this bands? What, what is it? Uh, I said, now what did I say? Uh, so, oh, so we are. So it, basically, I said an animal, and it ended with e. Okay. So I go, I go skate, eagle. There you go. Yeah, but hang on. I think I was the third person. Right. So think of another one. Uh, Hurry up. Eel. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, I did that one. Alright. Right. Yeah, a lot of E's coming up. Elephant. Yeah. Do you know what Carl said? Go on. Ready? Yep. Egg. <laughs> 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 oh, in a sense. I, I went, suppose. Egg? He went, yeah. I went, no! Wrong! He went, well, it, what? And then Martin came to his rescue and went, well, what is an egg? Animal, vegetable, miserable. I said, well, it's animal, but it's a- we can't have egg- But it, well, would you allow a tadpole? Well, uh, yes. Is yeah, cause it's a larval stage. Yeah, no, but egg, you might as well have leg. <laughs> or eye. Uterus. <laughs> it- it- it doesn't count. <laughs> egg, you panicked. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I still think I'm right. Well, you're not right. Yeah. We were- we were naming, you know. It's a bit of fun though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You mean, why obey the rules? It's exactly, yeah. No, that, that is true. Don't that is the true. Rules. That is true. You had the fireworks in the year, did you? Yeah. What, we, you had them yourself? No, 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 you could tell across the river, we could see them. But, uh, actually very impressive, and I'll tell you what, they got it right this year. Instead of two hours of letting off fireworks, people were going, oh, can we go now? It was three minutes, and they spent a million pounds on the three minutes. Yes. And that's it. That's all you can stand, three minutes of fireworks. Oh. To me, fireworks are like watching Lord of the Rings. Exactly, absolutely. I've never been impressed as a child. Never been impressed. I've never been impressed as an adult. But a big bang, a huge big explosion, that'll do me. I used to go to- they used to have little community, uh, fireworks displays at Christmas, things like that, near our school, maybe in the school or at the local kind of community centre. And I used to go along to them with the family and everything, get the sparklers, and they would have the fireworks, <laughs> oh, and that would be- and I was just bored silly. And I always thought that if the guy organising it had wheeled out an enormous firework, yeah. climbed in, gone, last one to the moon's a bender, <laughs> and then shot off. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd have been, yeah! That'd have been, oh, that'd be good, yeah. Or, do you reckon I could take out that church? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. money on it, go yeah, on yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be worth it, wouldn't it? But little, zoom, another one, oh, Christ. So a friend of mine was telling me that they once had some indoor fireworks. Which apparently is just, I mean, imagine that, what, who needs indoor fireworks? Well, I think that's just little, yeah. I think w one of the things, we got indoor fireworks once when I was little, and I remember one of the fireworks was that little celluloid fish that you put in the palm of your hand. Of course. And he goes, oh, future. you're sexy. <laughs> yeah. What, it curled up because the heat of your hand? <laughs> yeah! Oh. You're dead. It didn't curl. He, actually, it's granddad, he's dead. <laughs> yes. His hands are cold. Oh, no. That's the only way that that would be- oh, yeah, That's well- That's the only test. How did you discover he was dead? We used one of those predictive fish, it came out dead. <laughs> yeah. Just flat. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a good time though, Carl? What, at your place? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? We danced, didn't we? A bit of a dance. Well, the two of you together? Yeah, Amanda had got one of those, uh, DVD films. Uh, no, straight to, you know, DV a cameras. Camera. It goes right. straight to, um... DVD. Yeah, okay. amazing, right? And, uh, Carl was doing his moonwalking, I was sort of doing some sort of jazz step, wasn't I? Sort of like Michael Jackson. Uh, 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 uh. I ended up jumping up on the couch <laughs> with both feet and falling straight back on my back. Of course you did. I can't believe I was alright. Yeah. What's the chance of that? It's when you're drunk that it, it, you sort of like, you revert to childhood and you sort of bounce. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, luckily. Is I that DVD gonna be available in the shops later this <laughs> <day>? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Track one, side one, the first Talking Heads album, uh, uh oh, Love Comes to Town. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. Well, I think it's Rockbusters' results, isn't Ooh. it? Okay. Alright. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you want the prizes, by the way? Not really. Not bothers? No. Right, it's some videos and DVDs yeah, and that, yeah, some yeah. good stuff VHS in there. VHS hype. Mm -hmm. Couple. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Is that one TV about weather? TV titles, what? There's the weather one, that's gonna be on telly. Donald McIntyre. Oh yeah. That's, that's in there, if you want that. Yeah. Um. He reckons Donald McIntyre ripped him off, cause he did a thing about how much it costs to, to have a chimp, cheap as chimps. What was the only thing you think someone ripped you off? Uh, Rockbusters. Ken, so, Ken Bruce on Radio 2 is doing Songs of Phrase. He was doing that over Christmas. Was I said one week off, he's in there. <laughs> <laughs> and when he heard that Donald McIntyre was doing a programme about wind, he thought he was moving on Auntie, Auntie Nora. <laughs> right. So, uh, the first one, uh, 
Well, you leave the entrance to my garden alone, right? That was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth. Gareth. I, well, well, we'll Gareth. Just... Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, <laughs> why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a, what's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates, Gareth, 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 yeah, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth, Gareth Gates, Gates, the bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Go, leave my, leave my entrance alone, though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, ga the gate Gareth, to the garden. Well, no, no, the gates bit, but what's Gareth got to the do with it, you was, ignoramus? Don't, don't phone, but you can send me a message on, yeah. my, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just. No, it's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you'd have to say text, uh, me. Texas. Text, what do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was, uh, we were sharing out the, uh, the male sheep and that, right? Yeah. Uh, I got, I got the best one. DG, right? We were sharing out the male sheep. Get and to I got it! The best it one. doesn't work anyway. Get to DG. it. What is it? Delta Good Ram. <laughs> Delta Good Ram. <laughs> you were Delta Good Ram. Delta Good Ram. All right, so who's, who's the winner? <laughs> We're gonna give it to, uh, Stephen Gunning from Tooting. He's got all of those right, I don't know how, but well done to him and he wins, um, some crap in a jiffy bag. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you too, Alexa? Yeah. 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 Snow Patrol and Run. Oh. On XFM 104.9. Yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. So everyone had a good Christmas though, yeah? Really. Carl, even though it was like a little bit Lanza Grotty, it was a nice Christmas. Yeah. Did what, you- What was the book you read, by the way? Someone just uh, emailed in and wanted to know. What was the book it you was, read? It was the governor. The governor? Yeah. Right, okay. Did you buy Susanna a gift in the end? Which she, you surprised yeah, her with yeah, on Christmas I did, Day? Yeah, after that show that we did before Christmas. Yeah. I was walking home thinking, oh, might as well treat her then. Yeah. <laughs> um, went and got her a, a necklace. Nice. Actually, uh, she said she wanted a necklace, but I didn't know which one, but. Went and got one. Yeah. And she was happy with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that shut her up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And did, did she, she get did you she something? Get gift back? She did get me something, yeah. See, I knew, we knew she was. she would. Yeah, but the thing is, right, she got me a little Game Boy Advance to take on holiday because she knows I get bored. Lovely. Right? So that, that was good, but I, I was like, like, hang on a minute. I know how much I spent. Oh, f And I know how much these are, right? But I was clever though. When I got to the airport, I bought to get me an extra Get to bought me an extra game, game for it. Yeah. Got the value. Of course. <laughs> Are you, would, when you were growing up, did you wait to ask your mum for sweets right at the counter so the woman sort of would sort of embarrass her into getting you it? Uh, what, you mean just slip it in the basket? Well, no, just go, just wait, wait till there's some, uh, you know, a stranger watching before you ask for sweets. Mum, can I have a Kinder Egg? Did you sit in front of Suzanne when it got to the... Suzanne, can you get me something else? Because remember, I bought, spent more on that necklace than you did on like Game Boy Advance. And the woman in Dixon's goes, "Oh, you better get him something else." She goes, "Oh, bloody hell, all right then." <laughs> nah. She she did well though. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's done well to keep you, hasn't she? Because well. you're such a find. You're quite a catch. Yeah, you're, you're, she must wake nah. up every morning and go, "Who? I am the luckiest girl in the world." Well, she told you that the other night. What? She said the other night how good it is living with me. <laughs> Yeah, I what? said to Suzanne, it must be great because I only see him two hours a week, and I like to squeeze his little head. You can do that all day, every day. Does she ever squeeze your head? No, no, no. It's like that thing, though, isn't it? It's like when you work in a chocolate factory, you get sick of it, don't you? It's <laughs> there all the time. Yeah, she must yeah. think, well, I could squeeze that head any time I yeah. want. It's not worth it. I just, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. about your Christmas? My thing? dad, uh, I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad, cos, uh, he, um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this because he said you'll probably talk about this on the radio, and you're right, dad, I am talking about it. He bought my, my mum a, uh, little gold bracelet. Lovely, lovely gift. You know, it was a lovely thing. And I, she opened it, she loved it, and everyone thought, what a great gift, lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people. Look at that, look at the gleam on that. <laughs> See, see, look at the shine on that, look at the gleam there. <laughs> the look at that. Gleam. And do you know what he said? He went, he said, the great thing about that's pure gold. He went, it's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment there. Eh? It's gold, oh, you know, it's always worth oh, something gold. I love that when people give you a gift and go, it's an investment. But, I love it. But what, not only does it take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was I'll that tell you he what, I haven't, I haven't heard the word gleam for it's 30 funny. years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that, look at the sparkle on that. And look at that, and it looks like rope. That's how you get it, it looks like rope. <laughs> it's like gold rope. 
And, uh, he just can't, I know, I, I heard, he disappeared, we were opening gifts, he went disappeared, I could hear him in the kitchen going, thinking about, that's, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. <laughs> might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> next door neighbour, John, look at that! Look at the shine on that! That's great! That's brilliant, though! But it's just, it doesn't, it sort of undermine the gift a bit, if you keep on drawing well, no, on about people, how great uh, it people, is. Uh, people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it, and you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, loved she it. couldn't get a word in any way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. Oh. <laughs> what about yours? Uh, I didn't get my mum and dad anything this, this, this what? time. What? No, because I'm always treating them anyway. Whenever the, you know, if they need a few quid. Uh, yeah. if I can help well, you are do. the gift that keeps on giving, Carl. No, but don't just go giving anything just for the sake of it. You know what I mean? Wait for the t time that's right sort of thing. Just because yeah. it's Christmas. Because... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there, there's no better time, is there, really? No, I just was gonna say my mum and dad didn't get me anything, but they did. What'd they get? But, uh, just some money. Mm. But, um, I'll, I'll get them something when the time's right, do you know what I mean? They always mm. need bits and pieces through the year, so. Yeah. I'll look after them. Sure. But, um, it was weird being away. Has anyone got caught, caught on to the fact that, y you know, they leave groceries in the, in the telephone box near your dad yet? No, that's still going on. Is it? Going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? Mm. That is just mm. fantastic. So when he needs a loaf of bread, a pint of milk, just goes down. Does he ever, does he ever give that as gifts? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now listen, are we doing, uh, the film thing in a bit? Oh. Got more prizes. Yeah. Is it better than Rockbusters? Uh. It's all right. I did it in a bit of a rush because I was only in yesterday, wasn't I? Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, if you take yeah, like... three holidays a year, then so... there's not enough time for the work. Me and Steve like to, you know, put our priority into, you know, doing the work, coming up with a good product, yeah. and getting a holiday when we can. You know, we haven't. I, I haven't well, really. I love holiday, holiday, Rick. You know, I love holiday. But yeah. I don't do the holidays for me. It's for Suzanne, isn't it? She's the one who likes going away. <laughs> with so you. I just go. Yeah. So I'll go with her. Do me bit. When you were playing Game Boy, right, and you looked in the hole. And uh, you're reading your book. What is she, what is she doing? She'll sort of she'll make things seem more interesting to me. Do you know what I mean? So like when we're at the hole and the bus driver said you've got an hour here, I sort of said why have I got an hour here? I go to a funeral with someone who I loved in the ground and don't spend an hour around it. <laughs> why do I wanna? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why do I wanna spend an hour looking in this? Wasn't that terrible when when you're out you just shot up in all this magma? Yeah. That was terrible, wasn't it? That was the worst funeral you'd ever been to, wasn't it? But she'll, she'll I'll say that, that would make funerals more interesting. If they just, it, it was a cremation and a burial. Yeah. You just put them in a volcano they and they go, two, three, three, here they go, wee, up to heaven. I was having a conversation with my flatmate about songs that would be inappropriate to have at your wedding, at your funeral. And horny, surely, that is one. Yeah, was one. Was we it thinking, horny, really? Yeah, was the first one we came up with. I'm horny, horny, uh, horny, uh, horny. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was God. the first one we came up with. Isn't Robbie Williams' Angels one of the, um, Yes. Biggest And ones. I think Wind Beneath Your Wings. Yeah. I think is apparently quite popular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, we'll play that on Artie Nora's. <laughs> yeah. <don't> you? <laughs> <laughs> bit of Boston? Yeah. A bit of who? Busted? Boston. Boston. More oh, than a feeling. Right. Much more than a feeling. Boston. More than a feeling. XFM 104.9. Well, another big moment here. We've had Rockbusters. Now we're gonna have, uh, Carl's film quiz thing, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> film quiz thing. Um, I've done Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. Because one of the, uh, things we did in Lanzarote went on this tour with, uh, sort of three northern blokes and they didn't really know what they were talking about. Joking. What You're you joking. <laughs> Northerners not know what they're talking about. You're having a laugh. No, they, they'd obviously sort of not had much luck here, right? And thought, let's <laughs> go over to Lanzarote, buy some vans, right? Get people in it, we'll do a tour of the island. Mm. And whenever Someone asked the question like, what, when, what year did the volcano happen? They go, oh, we'll take you to the visitor centres, you can, you can read about it there. So they never actually answered anything, <laughs> right? So they were useless. But one of the things that they <laughs> told us was that Planet of the Apes was filmed in Lanzarote. Mm. Right. Okay. Right. That makes sense. A bit of it. Well, does it? Does well, that make sense? Well, what do All you right, mean, well, maybe does it? it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, <laughs> anyway. No! No, I mean, if they wanted to show sort of an hour and sort of barren, sort of post-apocalyptic sort of subject, choose where you went on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, but when, when we were there, well, he took us to this sort of beach and I said, is this, is this where they did it? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, what, right, right there, yeah. And I watched it and I couldn't see where I was. 
Yeah, you know that if you watch a film from 1968 and you've been no, in the same no, place, no, you're not going to feature. You're not, not going to see you in the back walking yeah. along the beach. It's a new one, new new Planet of the Apes. Oh, the recent right? Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. Right, right. So I thought I'd sort of. Now that, that sounds a little bit more far fetched. I thought that was probably a lot in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, anyway, is this the current Planet of the Apes or the, the old one you've done? Current Planet of the Apes. This is the recent one. All right, there'll be a question at the end of it, so listen on that. Is this entertaining to anyone, this? I mean, just, just take the last four minutes of conversation. But seriously, Rick, who cares? I don't. Do you? No. I don't. DVD's selling well. Exactly, what do I care? All right, go on then. All right, so, uh, Planet of the Apes, question at the end of it, listen and win some stuff, all right? <laughs> hey, where am I? What is this place? Hang on a minute, hang on. According to the Lanzarote guide, we've been dropped off at the, uh, at the volcano bit. Apparently there's 36 volcanoes here to be seen. I hope you don't mind my saying that this is a waste of time. What do you mean? I don't know why they need 36 volcanoes. Just keep one. Fill the rest in. Like a car park or something. Excuse me, guide. What's, uh, why is the, why is the bus drops us off here? What's, what's so special about this place? Well, according to our holy writings, that is where creation began. Where the Almighty breathed life in the time before time. Well, it's amazing that, isn't it? All this, all this has been studied for years and years. What about the coffee shop there? Is that, is that old, is it? Well. Well, nothing. You're out to rip us off. I bet it's about four quid for a coffee there. Always ripping people off. That's, that's what annoys me with these trips. You get us in the middle of nowhere, we die in a thirst. I'm not able to do without. The reason I've come here, I believe this is where they did, uh, Planet of the Apes, innit? Love monkeys. Especially the ones in Planet of the Apes, cos they, they talk and that. Talking monkeys can't exist. I'm joking, aren't you? Of course they can. Getting up to all sorts of stuff. I read about a monkey the other day who, who worked on the railway. Right, there was, uh, there was another one about a chimp that did a bank job and, uh, went off to Spain to sort of- SHUT UP! Oh, hey. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> little monkey fella. <laughs> it's come from that little coffee shop, it's been serving coffee. Now that is worth paying four quid for. No, you're teasing him. I'm not teasing it, it's working, isn't it? It's serving the t- <laughs> We want some coffee. Get us some coffee. I've heard about this. You can buy, uh, you can buy coffee that's been sort of hand-picked by monkeys. It's like coffee, mate. Except it's, it's more sort of coffee primate. Yeah? Hello, little fella. We want coffee. What do you mean, we? You're gonna have a coffee, aren't you? What else are you gonna do? Go and look at another 35 volcanoes. I'm staying here. I'm having a monkey coffee. It's brilliant. You find this amusing? Jesus, it's a talking monkey. Right, mate. Have a couple of coffees. Don't start now. We're off duty. I'm starving. What do you mean you're off duty? Have you bananas later? Just get us a couple of coffees. <laughs> right. I understand that you're tired and you've probably been on your hands all day. Just forget the coffee. You go and get some lunch. After you've got some coach, you lazy ass. You damn human! <laughs> Uh, lovely. Um, Excellent. So, uh, what's the question? Uh, if you've been listening to the whole show, <laughs> how many volcanoes do I think's on the island of Lanzarote? Okay. Yeah. I, might, I, might, be, I might have it wrong, what sure. I've been saying, but it's roughly around that. Yeah, yeah so right. what have you been saying? Yeah. Yeah. All Brilliant. Right. Uh, Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, you're more likely to win the prize if you leave, um, your address on the email. Yeah. Because otherwise we can't really be bothered to phone people or email them back. So, Good point. Uh, put right. your address on there and you could win some crap. In a jiffy bag. Carl's theme tune there by Placebo. Special needs. On XFM 104.9. All right. New Year's resolution, Carl? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't do it. Really? It's all about something like... I don't know. Start smoking. Do you know? There must be something. Uh, no, it's a waste of time, isn't it? Oh, don't, don't, don't bother with that. Right. Any, yeah. Me, no, I've never really made any New Year's resolutions. Just, I just be good to people. Just treat everyone as you want to be treated yourself. Mm. Give to charity. 
um, hate, crime, racism, famine, sexism. I, I, I know you're gonna keep to all those, except the gift of charity, that's- we, me and Carl find that a little bit hard to believe. Never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always got to break at least one of your news resolutions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I, I think I'd be nice to Carl. What about Learn More? I was thinking that. I want to Learn More. I'm always teaching you stuff. I've, I've, I've got, I, I watched, uh, i tell you what, Christmas telly was dreadful this yeah. year. I actually, I don't know if I've hit that age where I think, but I think consciously I thought this is worse than usual. Yeah. And I ended up watching that Discovery Channel and History Channel mm. again, and I watched four episodes in a row of, um, this fantastic documentary, 1418 War, um, narrated by Dame Judy, uh, Dame Judy Dench, and it's brilliant. I just can't get enough of it. I hated history at school, and now I want to know everything. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I think that's mine. Learn, learn all the s stuff about yeah, stuff. I, I like I'll... learning now. I yeah. always say that to you, I'm always looking up stuff. When I was on holiday, even though it was sunny outside and they had big holes to look at if I wanted to, <laughs> I stayed in and watched Discovery there and was watching stuff about scorpions and that. Yeah, what, what, what did you learn? Well, nothing, because it was all in Spanish. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just watched it. What, what I found out, <laughs> right? What I found- Scorpio, it's a very good thing. It's only about poison, you get away. What I don't understand is, with scorpions, right, Um they have like this- this sort of weapons, don't they? They have the poison and stuff, right? Yeah. Which can kill a man. Yeah. But, there was a couple of little animals and that, that were its sort of enemy, and it stung them, and it didn't kill them. So what's the point? Well, firstly, not all scorpions kill them, and some of them, they're- This one things, did, you said. Yeah, well, they, they, they range from, like, bee stings to so much venom it can take down a horse on- on things like spiders and snakes and scorpions. So it depends. But a scorpion that will kill a man would kill a rabbit. So I don't know what you're talking about. No, there was a snake that it stuck its thing into, and some sort of beaver, and they were just, like, <laughs> running about. There's nothing funny about that, so why are we laughing? <laughs> well, the snake wasn't running about, was it? Well, it's, it's slithering about a bit. Yeah. What was the beaver doing when just, the snake- Just, it just sort of, I think it ate it in the end. What, ate what? Ate the scorpion. Just wandered off. <laughs> well, it so wasn't a beaver! There you go, There's you've no that. way it was a beaver! Alright, an otter. It was <laughs> a... <laughs> this is what you pieced together from a show in Spanish. Well, oh. I'm just saying though, how come it, it can't kill something that small, yet there's someone on holiday that's no sort of danger to that scorpion. We're not gonna harm it. Right? And yet it can kill a man. <laughs> so you say, up, but Carl. I don't believe it. Shut up, mate. Seriously, this is gobbledygook. Taught you something again, though. That's what I'm no, saying. No, what have you always... taught us, though? What is, what is that, what is the fact that's come out of that? A scorpion can kill a man, but the beaver was dancing with a snake, then it well, that, You do that that's all not the time, a fact. That's not a fact. Down. New Year's Eve taught him something, right, about, uh, dead people. No. Do you know what the things that taught me? I was saying you're talking shite. He says they found out your soul weighs an ounce. <laughs> your soul? Yeah. Your soul weighs an ounce. Right, who found this out? I read it. Your arsehole weighs an ounce. Yeah. There's no <laughs> such thing. A soul weighs an ounce. You're talking to the devil. Alright. <laughs> Have you got any monkey news? Um, so what did they do? They, they, they measured, they, they weighed someone who was alive and they were waiting for you to die then weigh you again. There was oh, someone, there was someone Now who you've was... lost an ounce. Yeah, I'm sorry, it must be your soul shooting off to heaven. It was someone who was really ill and yeah. they said we can't do anything for you here but we've got a bit of a idea that we want to do. <laughs> Stuck him on some scales, he said, right, you weigh nine pounds and an ounce or whatever, cause yeah. he was wasting away. He died, nine pounds. <laughs> right? Fine, well that's proof if- proof we needed. Talking uh, shite. Monkey news, we might as well leave it. Now come on, no, come, come on, on, tell monkey news. No, it, it's nothing, uh, that great, really. Is it worth playing the jingle? Quickly? Go on then. Oh, chimpanzees up, monkey news! Right, it's about a monkey. Four, 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 four. four, four. It's about this- this woman monkey who was born in 1834, <laughs> right? Half monkey, half woman. No. Not true. It happened, apparently it was Impossible. in the- It was in the Daily Mail. Right? <laughs> okay. The Victorian ape woman was her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I christened uh, this, uh, thing, a Victorian ape woman. Well, we thought Sandra. No! I'm calling it Victorian ape woman. She was about four foot. No, didn't happen. She had lovely thick black hair on her head and on the back of her legs <laughs> and her arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So stockings. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and she didn't need a bustle because of her huge ape-like ass sticking out the back of her dress. <laughs> she was good at reading and sewing. Um, well, they, well, good because they didn't have opposable thumbs. So uh, uh, she could speak three languages. 
Yes. The, uh, human, monkey, and monkey human. Twenty offers of marriage. Does that annoy you, Steve? <laughs> Um <laughs> ah, absolute twaddle. All right, well, like more rubbish than your soul weighing an ounce. Let's leave a it Victorian there. monkey let's woman. Leave it there, then. See you next week with some more twaddle. I was worried we wouldn't have the old magic in 2004, <laughs> but we're still talking shit. <laughs> Merry New Year. <laughs> that was the record before us, and here we are pre-recorded because we did this a few weeks ago because we're not here at the moment, are we? We're away in that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Well, he's not actually with us, he, no. he's on the, he'll be in some of the, uh, best of clips that will be coming up shortly. Yeah, this is just us, isn't it? This is just us. We did this, when did we do this, Rick? A couple it's, of weeks back. Hold on, what is it? What it's day the 27th is it? today. Yeah, well, I enjoyed well, Christmas, I loved Christmas. I loved Christmas. I had I a great Christmas. time. What did you get? Uh, oh, loads of presents. So and I'm glad they made it to number one. <laughs> I'm really glad. Stroke, he, she. Yeah, I'm really glad that the pop idols, Cliff Richard, Westlife, made it to number one. Bo Selector. Bo Selector. Yeah, just delete that as, uh, Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna play some of the best of, some of the, the greatest moments of the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard on XFM 104.9. What about this, do you remember this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one is it? <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Over there, Carl Pilkington. The man who believes anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a condition due to his little round head. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it might be a new condition that uh, we can call cranial sferity. <laughs> and it, cause it's, it presses on his lobes and the only sort of upshot of that is, he's normal in every way but he believes everything he reads <laughs> or yeah. sees on Anna Nova. Mm. Mm. Alright? Talking of which, Rick, I don't really follow the news. No. It's mainly boring, isn't it? Wars and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know Well. Yeah. Well, it is a war. It's just, it's all this nonsense before and after. When it's a war, it's, you know, it's in the middle of the war, you can watch it on telly. True. You get results. Yeah, true, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a test match or something. But it's all this rubbish before and after. It drags this, on. This recent war seemed, I thought, just generally, it was better presented than the previous one. Because I remember the well, Gulf, the first Gulf War, it was, it was often during the night. And it's I wasn't going to stay up. Yeah, because I think the American had rights to it, like the Tyson fight, so we, yeah. had, to, we had to get it at two in the morning. Exactly. Which is annoying. They had, you know, their prime time in that. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of it was in black and white, as when, when the bombs went in. So, in uh, this no, time, the, there seemed a lot more colourful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much better coverage. I think there should be an awards. Yeah, well, I'd like for it. So, like, Channel 4 one for cricket. Yeah, I mean, a few times as well, I was quite pleased to see you know, they actually had footage of the bombs exploding. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 no, just, good, well done. Generally, you know, good on you, yeah. well done, um, good on you. Yeah, it costs you, a lot though, doesn't it? It is isn't a cost. Wars thing. a lot more when you got something like you know uh, a Jimmy Carr game show, which probably costs about underground. Yeah, like half an hour of war costs oh, no. millions. It's almost man. as expensive as like Terminator Three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know. But, but then you know, you got you got a variety. Exactly. Sorry, Steve, you're talking, mate. <laughs> well, no, I just. Uh, just wanted, I just wanted to make sure you're aware that the, um, the World Elephant Polo Championships have taken place. I did get it. You're I think that means on, yeah, yeah, we won, didn't we? England won. Yeah. Well, I, my question is, where have they been practicing? I don't know. I, I, do you remember it, whatever at school, anyone ever saying to you, <laughs> are you interested in playing, uh, polo? Do you, reckon it was, it was, do you reckon it was five blokes in pith helmets kept sneaking into a whip's nade? <laughs> Possibly. What are you doing, lads? We're practicing. Get, get down. Yeah. Get off them elephants. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't, I didn't even know we had a team. I elephant, can't believe it. No, but it's like Johnny Wilkinson in the rugby lands, they're gonna get MBEs, all sorts. The elephant boys, the elephant polo boys, nothing. They're gonna get nothing. I haven't seen the but, sun you know, to, be, like to be fair, it's not like horse polo where I think, I don't think you, there's a stick long enough. I think the elephants kick it, don't they? I think you might be right. I think they're not allowed to use their tusks. They burst it, won't they? Mm, I think they go, yeah. oh, <laughs> it's that again. Raheem. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean the elephants kick it? All right, I've, got, I've opened a can of worms here. Uh, you know, um, um, normal polo on a horse, they have like um, yeah, they whack them up. yeah, they whack them, right? But I think it's obviously they're too high up. I think I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just train the elephant to kick it. So, so wh like, why are people something about? Why not just let them have a kick about without? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that! And why does horse racing have to have a jockey? Well, they just let the horses go. Oh, yeah, okay, lads, on your no cheating. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. You don't know, get back here. Get back here. Brilliant. Yeah. Play record. Right, Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. His version of Wonderwall. If you've not heard it yet, you'll be loving it. You'll be loving this. 
This is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. There's a fella who, um, was in a coma for 20 years. Mm. Just, they, they kept, like, taking him to, through, like, a normal day. They'd take him to Alton Towers and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't know any, about anything about it. Just kept going through the motions. Um, don't know if they kept charging him. Um, <laughs> kept putting him through all that. He eventually came out of it. 20 years. And went, stop taking me to Orton Towers, it's shit! <laughs> I, ju I just thought, imagine and how much post making, he eh? How much post. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did God. you read about that guy in the paper, Carl? He, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the internet. Uh, he, he, in about, I think it was about 1984, 85, he had a terrible car accident. But this went, must be it. He this went into a coma. This must be what he's talking about. Well, they didn't take him to Alton Of course Harris. they didn't. But you've got to try and decipher the truth from the conjecture, from the thing that he, he I mean, don't forget, Carl says, uh, realises that he's had a dream. He talks to Suzanne and goes, that was good, wasn't it, last night we were in the plane? She goes, no, that's a dream. He goes, oh yeah, where's my car flex? <laughs> you've got to, you know what I mean, I can now decipher what he's actually seen, what he's read. Well, go on, what, what, what did you- Well, I'm assuming it's the same guy. <laughs> it is the same guy. Uh, it was a guy in, uh, some small American town, yeah. and he'd had a car crash and he'd gone into a coma and his, uh, wife had, uh, left him. She'd gone on with her life because he'd been in a coma since then. And he had just woken up recently. Marriage wasn't working. <laughs> Marriage wasn't working. Uh, he just wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he actually had, she was pregnant at the time, and so now his daughter, his now, his daughter is basically the same age as he was when he went into the coma. And, um, oh. he's just started coming around, he's just started making jokes. He says, they said, uh, how do you feel? He said horny, which I thought was quite witty for a man who'd been in a coma for, uh, for many years. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's slowly trying to rebuild, uh, what, life he can- he can. That's what do you make of that though? Cause he, the thing is that he's missed- imagine what he's missed, Carl. Imagine the music that he's missed, the Live TV Aid. programs- Miss Live news. Aid. <laughs> Live Aid. He's missed, he missed uh, Phil Spice Collins Girls. playing in two consonants in one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, oh, frankly, I'd be devastated if I just missed that. Miss Bross. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't, so he put on ripped jeans and they go, passe. They just have to send him a series of those, uh, <laughs> I Love 1986 exactly. programs with Kate Thornton filling him in on what he's Exactly. Doing. Peter Kay reminding him of space hoppers. Yeah, he remembers Richard those. Talking rubbish. Yeah. So, um, so uh, extraordinary though, isn't it, Carl, to think? Mm. No, obviously. So, not. Had, had he aged much? Because he hadn't had any problems or anything, no worries. Well, well he, he, probably wouldn't, a... he probably wouldn't have, physiologically, he probably wouldn't have the wear and tear of a 43 year old no. man. Because he wouldn't have sun, he wouldn't have had sort of nicotine, beer. Um, Unless they were just feeding that to him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, like still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so You'd feel groggy though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you might feel a bit groggy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not, he's not fully back to normal. I mean, there's no, like some kind of residual brain damage. Yeah. But nevertheless, he can form sentences. He's got very, he's got no real memory, so he can't remember a lot of things. It was just when I saw- Carl, have you been in an accident? <laughs> <laughs> the brilliant blur, out of time on XFM 104.9. One of my favourite singles of the year, and that's another thing, we'll be playing our favourite singles of the year, as well as our favourite clips of our own show. Rick, I imagine if people have got a bit of Christmas money, they're wondering what they can spend it on. Office DVD? Well, other than that, these guys have got some ideas. What, adverts? Uh -huh. Brilliant. Placebo? Bitter End on XFM 104.9. This is pre-recorded. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago, before Christmas. I hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, if you didn't, it's not our fault, really, is it? Nothing to do with us. Wouldn't have thought we'd have. We had a whirl of a time because we got plenty of cash now, <laughs> thanks to a lot of you who probably bought the uh, Office DVD. Yeah, probably got and that. If you haven't yet, and you've maybe got vouchers or money, still available. Still there in the shop. Still available. You can still make it the best-selling DVD of all time. Please, please, please do. Yeah. Please do. I tell you what, you wanna. Here, there, before you make your mind up. I'll tell you what, if you like this next clip, go and buy the Office DVD. I think you will. It's a brilliant clip. It's the one where we talk about, uh, well, it, it's self explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best job you've ever had still, Carl? Talk about it. Is it is still paper the paper round? Is it still <laughs> the paper round? Yeah. That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was good, though. If you look at it, like, you know, what I liked about it, you're your own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. <laughs> no, the, the guy who the agents is your boss. All right. But then when, once you get out and you've got your papers and that, you, you sort of, you're on your do own. Do you want as long as you deliver stuff. the papers exactly to the places he said you are in the time he said? Yeah. It's and I freedom, do. isn't it? <laughs> Any jobs you wouldn't do? Uh. I've just thought of one that you wouldn't do. Go on. With your sort of mild homophobia. Well, I'm not. Proctologist. What's that? Basically sticking your finger at other people's arses. Right, well, no, I wouldn't do that, no. Why have you got to do that? 
<laughs> what do you mean, why have you got to do well, that? Why does anyone need that doing? Does they got to look if they've got an arse ache or something? Which trainee doctor makes that their speciality? Do you know what I mean? That must be, um, right, we got a place for horses, and it's, it's you, Meadows. You, you yeah. came last. Oh, seriously, what? I'm not the arse doctor, am I? Yeah. You came last. Oh, I'm a bun- a bun GP. I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah. You got to- oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. Tell you a job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The- the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how to describe it, really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's so like- It's like American uh, Beauty, but with- with, uh, different- Not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, if you go to the seaside, you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts and it looks like you're a big fat person or you have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I think morning. they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has two hours of makeup before yeah, they exactly, open, yeah. dressing her in there. Because I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She, she has just to go by feel alone, just to feel the <laughs> fridge, and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can, you gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing, there's nothing. Does she have to sell her way out of it? <laughs> if, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there till the next day. Yeah, it's like a world-breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job wouldn't you want to do? Well, any job, you're a lazy f- You're yeah. joking, aren't you? Uh, I've done loads of stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now, doing what I'm doing. Yeah? You but, look uh, happy. I think I'm sound happy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. I Are you on E? I'm happy for England, everyone, and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on, happy for them. I'm happy in that. Yeah, what do you mean, happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely the contributed. Switching on the TV was about <laughs> as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivor the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. It was, <laughs> it was bloody awful, but not as bad as his Russian cousin, Ivan. Yeah. Go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? Yeah. This fella built his house. Yeah. Uh... After it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fellow was like, uh, <laughs> fella Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just stop him making an house like that. Another. Blimey. That's why bad, didn't it? Why didn't you take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen, yeah. but he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. You can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. I, we, I, think, suppose yeah. he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that. Once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He thought, why? Why? Because you like, gouge people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous, you know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat, but... Yeah. Ivan, uh, Ivan gouge someone's eyes out. That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the... C- Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're gonna get on an history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity work he did. <laughs> the impaling is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or little Ivan the Terrible <laughs> is the, the the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was, it was just little bits like that. It, talking about him, there was a thing about, uh, someone who worked for that, that fella who painted the ceiling. Sistine in, Chapel? Yeah. Th- okay. There was a thing, the, the, a woman who worked for him in his house, and, um... I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic, or just, or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out because built him an house. The f- that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. <laughs> Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you probably end up with not not getting a grade, or yeah, or, or thinking you turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the Go woman on. who lived with yeah, the woman who lived in the shoe. Go on. Yeah, yeah. there's this woman who uh, who lived with him, and yeah. uh, she used to like you know go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, Wait, but that, no, no, no. Wait, that's an excellent point. Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, 
loads of different coloured paints. But why couldn't stuff? she draw, draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> That's the point. That's it. That is. We were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. You done it. Play a record. <laughs> this is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merch. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. I'm amazed that these are the highlights and that we've strung it out this long, Rick. But the good thing about this is we're not here. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Just the links, right? This has taken us about ten minutes for the whole show. We get paid the same. Why don't we do this every week? <laughs> That's a great idea. High five. Five. <laughs> Listen to this clip. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that. I know. Well, I, don't it. I was thinking. But I, I, I can't believe it. He talked about this buying it. He's got a bit of cash now, of course. And uh, what is it? Forty-two inches. Mm. 42 inch plasma screen. Wouldn't it cost you three grand or something? Oh, don't tell me. That's, that's, that's Wow, huge. it's ridiculous. Three and a half grand. Three and a half grand. Big spender. Uh, of course it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room, in my living room for it. You know, you know, it, for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out from the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it through a hat. <laughs> yeah. if, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. What, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. But that's then what's the, the point in having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit and right sit next to it. <laughs> <laughs> do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema, then? Did you see films that are out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Don. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered <laughs> and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You well, well, if I, I've never had anything delivered before, I've never well, spent no, that not much money. It, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who's struggled up the stairs, I two, the door two open fat blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But, but the problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him. And the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket. Yeah. And I reached in to get it. He put his hand out, thinking it was a tip. I went, I went, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left. I didn't know. I, I, what was I going to do? Run down the street and offer him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not made no. money. I just spent it all <laughs> on TV. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money, mate. Yeah. I just spent it all on yeah. this. Uh, to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Yeah, I'd take some, um, yeah, bottles back. What, what but you, what, I, the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought I'm not going to pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So I took me about three hours to wire it in and it was huge and I got it switched on and the first program that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was really, oh, it was like, <laughs> it was like x-rays. It was so the close. Cloud. You know, a, a huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out of the and he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grim. to get you. Yeah, he turns away, you get a bit close, they go, what's he doing? He just turns <laughs> exactly, around, yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think, Bargain Hunter? It's Bargain Hunter, Bargain Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's ludicrous. This is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I watch? I mean, have you watched anything that's been worth having? The only thing I've watched really worth watching. 24? Well, on, yeah, on 24 big... works great. But right. also films, obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it, because films just look amazing on the- Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah, screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about, and I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause well, not this one, but go on. Well, <laughs> I, when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, because I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um. Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did, when did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, I'm not having a go, I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right, so Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ. I sat mate. there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Come I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh, right. Little fellas in a in a wheelchair having a having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But for me, I mean, you know, great. They're doing a the sport and everything. Don't put it on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't there wasn't like a rally going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally Christ. like with the with the with your, well, not to Edmund, but with some of the <laughs> With, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? It's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! 
<laughs> what, 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 and people, people would like sat there watching it as well when they've got mm -hmm. other games going on in there. That's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money oh, to get God. in, yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they. Do you know what I mean? But it would have been. I and they all start first in the marathon. I just thought it would have, you know, give them a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> Yeah. There's never anything XFM on. XFM in the community. <laughs> Let's play a tune with Ricky Gervais, <laughs> Ricky Don Gervais XFM. Don't put my name <laughs> to this last link. <laughs> Don't put my name to this last link. Ricky Dot Gervais, XFM.co.uk. Oh. Magic, Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> that was Radiohead and there, there. Uh, we're not here, here. Alright? <laughs> Pre-recorded. Coming up is, uh, one of Carl's little film things where he puts himself into a film. It's his favourite film. It's Kez. Enjoy it. I love the fact that in um, pole position, in, in positions one and two of his favourite films of all time, it's The Elephant Man and Kez. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. All right. Am I leaving the mics open a bit when this is going out yeah, or Yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah? Uh, yeah. All, right. all right. So don't talk then, right? Just put that hot dog down, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bit in Kez <laughs> where it's the teacher and, and, and he gets up and he has to Glover. talk. What's his name? Is it Brian Glover? No, no, no. No. No, it's What's the other the, teacher. The other one. Anyway. Oh, go on. All right. So, here we go. Things that have actually happened. I've oh, yeah. another one. What about you, Casper? Casper! All right. All right? All right. You haven't been listening to a word I've said, have you? Mm, yeah, I heard, uh, I heard some of it. Yeah, you've... Some of it? Just... Stand up. Oh. Always somebody, isn't they? <coughs> right, now you're going to tell us a story about yourself. What sort of story? I want you to think of an incident that happened to you sometime in the past that is true and that you think will interest the rest of the class. All right? All right. Uh, uh, what about, uh, I work, I work on a, um, on a radio show at the weekend. What are you going to tell us about it? I just, um, just do, it's two hours, and it's, it's with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, and, uh, just sort of play music and, you know, tell stories and stuff. What kind of stories? Well, whatever. Like, last week it was science. We were talking about, uh, this lad who was growing, uh, a, a knob on his arm, so. <laughs> it's weird. It's tricky, sir, because, like, with Ricky, he, he gets bored quick, and... He won't listen to the stories, and he'll start squeezing me out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not interested in what he does. <laughs> that isn't that isn't normal, is it, sir? That I mean, it sure is a bit gay. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Just messes about, though. Do you know what I mean? I try and like come up with good stuff, like monkey news and like quizzes and stuff, but. Then he'll just, you know, Ricky will just mess about. I mean, on, on Saturday he did it again, he, he, he squoze me head. How did you spell that? Squoze. S Q. Oh, you going to show it off the wall? Yeah. Is the new word to me? Uh, squoze is S Q U O Z E. Uh, I can't tell us what the kiss. It's when, um, it's when he, he gets me head and he puts one hand on the back of it, right? Yeah. And he puts the other hand on the front of it, and he just sort of swivels it. Swivel, right down the front. Oh, swivel's not a... It's spelled S-W-I-D. Ah. How many times a day? How many times a day does, does he swivels it? It depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But, but I think, you know, I don't, don't really want to talk about... Well done, don't you? Well done, Billy. Three hand of <laughs> uh, the effort. Yeah. Uh, wow. That, that's, uh, that's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. 50 Cent in the club on XFM 104.9. We're playing our favourite singles of the year. Yep. And, uh, we're looking back over some of our, our favourite clips of the year. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? I've done loads of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Well, right. Same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the, on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Your Bible. Mm -hmm. Where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and morality from. And you know, like, how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read, read the headline. Perfect. 
right? Yeah. And an over, a sort of nick that idea, to grab you. <laughs> 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 to <laughs> nick what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat, straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right, these are stories- But the headlines already existed, that was why you thought nah, that was gonna not happen. like this though. All right. <laughs> Headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> 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 Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. You don't Vibrating need- Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could you read that anyway? <laughs> can't be bothered. <laughs> Read on anyway. Well, Read you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so, oh, okay. so what this is frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've <laughs> turned it off. If yeah. you want to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. <laughs> right. Bong. Right. Well, right. Look, it up. look it up on the internet. Right. Alan over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I know that. Don't look down on this one. This is very good. And, oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. <laughs> I love that out of all those. That's the one you read on about. Go on, then. Just, um... Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No. I was rubbish. But what are the rules on, on world records and that? I don't, I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't. I mean, it's it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it? Really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but is there anything if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, "Well, you can't do that"? Yeah, they've they've stopped some gluttony records. Obviously, things that are in danger. Th and so anything that's illegal, yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that that American serial killer that just got discovered. Yeah, and killed forty seven women. I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because th people would be trying to beat it, won't <laughs> they? <laughs> but there was some some other story about a fellow eating watches and that. That can't be good for you. So why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else. He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> do you know what, what do you mean? mean? I just, I just wondered what if What do you mean he was eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got, he had about three in about a minute. How did he, how did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? And then, the other thing is, the one, the one that I was reading, the world record, with the fellow who's pulling a train, with his mm. teeth. Mm. Does, does that make any difference? That he's done it with his teeth. What do you mean? Well, what difference does it make? Well, isn't it? It's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's so you this is my point. There's, uh, I think there was uh, one bloke with a record for the backwards running backwards hundred meters was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, <laughs> turn around, you'd probably you'd probably have a really good go at that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. <laughs> Take the milk bottle off and see how fast you can go, you <laughs> twat. But you can just tweak it, like the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner, right? <laughs> right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's, if he's got a stretchy head, right? <laughs> but, but you are, right, <laughs> you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Well, listen. <laughs> so, Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record is 153 <laughs> pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so, he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, I've got 150 pegs on, but at the same time as eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or the it, world or record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> you're not gonna make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just gonna do the pegs thing. You're not gonna introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move, because they lived on Butthole Road. Yeah, I quite like that. Now, one. I, 
I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not going to tell you the name of the street that I used to live on, because- not on air, because my parents still live there and I don't want right. to, you know. But I'm going to write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. Just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance in French, you've got to say, they've got, you've got to answer where you live. Yeah. J'habite, wherever. Yeah. That's the name, this is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, it's not. I swear to God. <laughs> that is- <laughs> my absolute right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. No, I swear because he doesn't want to- To God. And I tell you that- what, But listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe S. I know. Because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. Imagine how embarrassing So if was. I look that up in the Bristol- You'll find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear that to God. That is really- Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's I'm incredible. still embarrassed now. Do you know if whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that will hide it. That'll disguise the name. But I can't get over that. But anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue, yeah, <laughs> you know, or um, Wankling Drive, Wankling <laughs> Drive, just get in touch. Let yeah. us know. We're not really interested. This is the best of show on XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. I know what you're thinking. If this is the best, my Christ, what was the rest like? Well, we'll be back in a week's time so you can, uh, judge it for yourself live. But anyway, in the meantime, this is one of the best clips <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing just thinking about what it might be. <laughs> he said this, you know, oh God, it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah. I mean, that's about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a, a first class citizen. Yeah. Much better, wasn't it? An aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man yeah. than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, uh, uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon And as I said, well, was, you know, ancient Rome. I said, um, you know, Nero, he used to, he sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men to go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he, he was having a watch. He didn't do that. He, he did. did. Uh, yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No, well no, I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean it wasn't, it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you- So what, what did this fella do then? This one who's having his- Well he was, he was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And uh, you know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the doors opening. I was going to see what Nero's doing. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there and you'd have gone there at Nero as uh, as the tablets of stone you wanted. And they go, Pilkington, why are you are here? Pop and I don't know why he's French. <laughs> what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles, and you'd have done it. Because he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's, no, there's no way I would have done. Yeah, well, you would have. What if I had done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you put under Nero's face <laughs> pizza. I've dropped right. a pizza. Right, I'd, I'd say I've done my job. Right. Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he'd have said, get the little baldy chap to nibble at my testicles, and you'd have been under the water. No, I wouldn't have done it. No, well, no, I wouldn't have done it. Right. No, I wouldn't have done well, it. Well, so. uh, 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 can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling at his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a. You'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going. He'd have gone. I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. You'd, they'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped. You'd have. You'd have gnawed his right. packet <laughs> off. You think you're <laughs> eating Walker's <laughs> crisps? <laughs> there'd be bubbles. There'd be blood. <laughs> oh, it'd be <laughs> horrible. That was Bowie and Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Love Bowie. Bowie was my gig of the year. These are my singles of the year. These are our clips of the year. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. We're yeah. just picking some lovely little bits and pieces. Do you remember when we talked about this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What, education? What teaching, yeah. Well, okay, um, what, what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Can you educate us on anything? I've been reading bits so and So could we bring back just for one, one, for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Do you think it warrants that? I don't, I don't know enough about it. Do you know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. <laughs> Play the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, educating Ricky. He's getting smarter. <laughs>
couple of things happened in the week that I read about. Okay. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about that Galileo fella. Okay. Uh, was it about 1636? <laughs> 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 was on. it? Was it? I think it might it have been earlier. Bad. Go on. Did some stuff with light and that. He, uh, yeah, he did lots of physical uh, experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He that's, did, that's he did some stuff with light and that. What did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did, he, well, he, uh, I think he invented the first- Telescope? Uh, yeah, telescope. So, I, I, I think it's a particular lens out of that, um, and, uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different, uh, weighted, uh, balls from pizza, pizza, and, uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that it doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter. Air resistance does and stuff like that. I think he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. Sure. But d d did they need to know? He's stuff just thinking about pizza. Yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean? Did they need to know stuff like that? It's just, it's just. There weren't people going around going, "I've got to drop these two things off the Blue Tower of Pizza." I, I just don't know. know which one's going to land first. Yeah, I need to know. What do you need to Bring know? Bring me Galileo. Yeah, it's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about, then I'd be like, "Stop messing with that." We need a telly. Or <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I know. Like, that'd be brilliant. That's what I'd do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and, and a cement that I just mixer. Ran along the room with. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. <laughs> anyway, so I learned that. And yeah. then, um. What? what? <laughs> he learned his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people I like know the name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly. Go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said, uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye. Over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire news. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See, that, that to me wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be applicable to I life. Ju I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of, do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's, that's a good little piece. But, but I mean, uh, but surely me, uh, sh can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going? Or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? I thought that's, that's a bit that's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay. And it ends there with me. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else. There's nowhere else for me to go on that. He closes your mind's the still worrying. <laughs> yeah. Go on. What do you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I know. Just watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great, like a DVD? A, like a added, imagine that, uh, extra footage on the office DVD. Yeah. Carl's Carl, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, what with the commentary. <laughs> Go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? <laughs> on the estate that I grew up in. Yeah. On, on, right? Uh, there's a woman about four houses down. <laughs> right? Right. Rough. Now, she used to wear leggings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the colour? normal were, were they, were they, they were, pink? No, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings. Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to, um, she's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think yeah. described well, her as. Looked like a light bulb. It is those kind of women leggings. that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> 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 yeah. She yeah. used to wear them and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece and, <laughs> uh, she used to work on one of those sex line things. Right. Right. She used to do that. But, <laughs> what was she, an engineer? <laughs> the, the, weird, <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing, the weird thing with her was, um, <laughs> she had big eyelids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go on. That, that were too big and this, this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do, you mean she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> what was she shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with like radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah, she had no, big it a, eyelids? It was another one of them popular things around our way. Do you know like- What do you mean popular <laughs> things? I, I think they go, they go, oh, I'll tell you what, they're all the rage. Can I get some big <laughs> eyelids, please? No, 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 it was just like one of them things that people suffered with. Just big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you mean? That, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up. People had big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. What does that mean? What sort of freak town were you born in? You had webbed feet people with big heads, you got women with big eyelids. What does big eyelids mean? Are you confusing her with the horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? <laughs> Look, what? Just anyway, so there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you though, that's- when I read that story with people with trousers, yeah. I went from that- Yeah. To a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. <laughs> still- I still know the point. But then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a- was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His- his dad had it. Um, <laughs> same problem, massive- massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, um, I used to say to my mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or to say, Pete, well, you <laughs> that's all right, but make sure- his dad doesn't take you out in the car because he could hardly. <laughs> <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his head. <laughs> he gets to tilt his head back to keep his eyes open. Sure. Did he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> oh. What a load of gobbledygook! Uh, well, that is... This began as educating Ricky. I know. It's so like he was people thinking, with eyelids. But it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky will probably be thinking about people with big eyelids <laughs> and women yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. Uh, this is the best off show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. <laughs> Like I said to you though, mm. the reason I did this yeah. was to get that kitchen, right? Now, Brilliant. as we speak now, right, builders in the flat, he's been annoying me. <laughs> of course <laughs> he has. Of course he has. What's he been doing? Uh, well, when he when he turned up on uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. Wanders in, and the first thing he says to me is, uh, he "Said the pub across the road is it any good?" <laughs> I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You're working on the kitchen. Think of saying that to a builder. Probably making conversation. Probably meant, do they do a, a, a toasted sandwich? Because I've got a half hour lunch break. Not an hour, like Carl Bilkington. Mm, mm. So, uh, I'll probably then get a nice, you know, cheese and tomato sandwich. So you genuinely what you said to him? Yeah. yeah. Thing yeah. You said so, to so Suzanne had a go at me saying, why have you said that? He hasn't even started on it yet. I cannot believe <laughs> that. You're unbelievable, Carl. And you say it's us that are rude, crass, I wasn't being rude. I just was, I just was letting him know. Do you know what I mean? I know what He knows what he was there for. He had it down on his little docket, do the kitchen this week. <laughs> yeah. He didn't come down and go, what the f- what did I come out for? Was it to go to the pub for a week? Why am I mm. wearing his overalls? Yeah. Who's the little bald man twat <laughs> insulting me? Let me just check. Let me call the head office. I wasn't having a go though. I mean, they should have finished it yesterday. And they're yeah. there now. Right? Yeah. On their own. And what annoyed me is they turned up late today. Hold on, Carl, I've just realised something. They're probably listening to the radio. This, I assume, tuned to XFM, isn't it, in your kitchen? Yeah, but- they don't know it's me, do they? Do you know what I mean? No. They'd go, he's got a whiny mank voice as well. So's the bloke who owns this place. And the bloke who owns this place, when I said, what's that pub like across the road, said, well, you won't be bothering that. He's working on oh, No, he, he won't be able to put two and two together, will he? You've suddenly, the pen is dropped, doesn't it? You've suddenly realised, look at his face! Yeah. He's suddenly realised they might know it's him! And they could be listening, and they're gonna clean you out, mate. Oh, uh, if you are the builder working in, uh, where is it? I won't say the address, but it's central London, isn't yeah. it? Go yeah, go mental. Have whatever you want. Opposite Seriously. that, opposite that pub that yeah. you like, that you're. That It'll you're probably be in there now, so he won't be listening. Oh, insulting! You know insulting I mean? a really British insult. workman. He should so have been just go mental. He should have been at, at eight this morning. Just which go me anyway. mental. Why? I don't. I really don't understand why they've got to start so early, right? Yeah. But he said he'll be there for eight. Turn up at half nine, yeah. right? Wanders in, and what annoys me is. He could have left all this downstairs. He had a paper under his arm, yeah. one of those crossword books, yeah. and a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not being funny, but most of them take a, quite a bit of time. A crossword book, he's not happy with just the one that's in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, if you are the builder that's listening now, doing Carl's flat, what about pissing in the laundry basket? That was, uh, Jane's Addiction. This is the Best Of Show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merch. Yes. This was a clip show. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I hope you had a, uh, a Merry Christmas. Um, it's not over yet, cos tonight at 9.50 is the second part of the Office Christmas specials. It's brilliant. Watch it. And we'll be back next week live on Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Bye. Have a great new year. <laughs>
probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something, which is, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said Monkey News is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> 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 I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just a phrasing, I suppose. He's it's a headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, he wasn't up there taking a picture <laughs> of Big Ben. <laughs> no, he wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just gonna take a picture <laughs> of that, that <laughs> seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually... He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today, on the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life there. It was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some, I had some, someone set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the end of it. No, it no, won't happen again. But it's only you and I in here and your shoe was yeah. just suddenly lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. This is how I always just, stand. Just, just, where, what did the bike look like? Flash? <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures of my family? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, how do you know that? What? How did you know I'm not? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any... I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well... I don't know what it looks like, and I never- <laughs> there's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be- it would be the roughly that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> it's just gonna be your auntie Nora. No, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the- the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road and I could see, uh, it was the hairy, hairy. There was a hairy Chinese. Well, not hairy kid, Chinese kid. He, he was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah, yeah. Running back. That's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? <laughs> In one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Oh, and it was the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died, and no yeah. one came round yeah. for yeah. weeks. Yeah. But and now I've moved, right? Mm. And it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting. Sure. Right. Uh, looks across, and it was just sort of empty sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right? Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right? Um, and they've put all the furniture in, but right. I haven't put any curtains up. Oh. Right. So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window. Yeah. Right. Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on, right? With no knickers on? You mean no naked? Knickers. Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, She's no probably knickers. looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. Sorry, is this some sort of Peeping Tom confession? <laughs> no idea. Well, it's, it's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if, if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no. But and your this hands is moving it. as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> and some white looking substance <laughs> rotting up. Simply stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming your sink is lower but, than the window. But but did, didn't she just like just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, Oh, you're looking at you're looking at my bunny. Well <laughs> the thing I did What? I thought, oh just sort of dropped me boxer short. Cause I what? thought Well Suzanne said, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just, just, just so they can see me cheeks of me. What are yeah. you talking about? No, this, because I thought, if she thinks I'm ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Um, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, just... the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your boxer shorts. No, no, she wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So, this is she, wouldn't genius. Have, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So you then made them. <laughs> <laughs> you actually got in front of them. Oh, this is amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <la
Wait. So you climbed in front ah. of the window uh, to show oh, off not, your, your, it wasn't your naked lower half. Su Suzanne said, what are you doing? I <laughs> bet she did. <laughs> What are you looking at? So I sent you in here to clean up. What are you up? doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing out of the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? <laughs> I'm exposing yeah. myself while looking at some free <laughs> fame. Leave it, leave it, leave it. What's up with you, Suzanne? Anyway. Oh, wait a minute. Can I just get... <laughs> A final question. <laughs> what did the woman yeah. across the way? Th what yeah. happened? What, what was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankles? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window yeah. because then it's Excellent. obvious." Then, yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked. He goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne. Get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with him. To get some more friends. <laughs> They've got one more." Roll Over DJ by Jet on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl? Yeah. Bit miserable today, Carl. Let me explain why. Go on. Steve, and to you, the listeners. Well, we came in to a big, big bunch of stuff. Dropped off by, who was it? Becky from yeah. Marks and Spencer. Just like lovely stuff. Food, presents for the cat, books, just, you know, to Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve who do the show, right? Ricky, Gervais and Steve Merchant. GQ presenters of the year. Creators of The Office, yeah. right? Award winning. Carl's looking over, I go, oh, uh, so, well maybe, oh, it's not just, not for you, no. And then, then he told me why he's grumpy anyway. Go on. Do you know what XFM are giving everyone, he's been, how long have you been here? About six years. What are you getting for Christmas from XFM? Two CDs. <laughs> 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 Is that of your choice or do they choose them? Uh, there's a list of about thirty. Right. <laughs> Tell me what you chose. Thirty CDs. I've gone for uh, Kings of Leon album. Yeah. And uh, the best of Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we like given them away in the past or something? Or you could have burnt them off, couldn't you? You could have done copies illegal, but you could have done that mm. anytime you wanted. Tell I, I don't it. think Bob Marley minds if you no. the bootleg his CDs. It's out of order though, isn't it? It is bad. <laughs> Although you Is that always the case? Has it always mm. been the true of all the time you've been here? No, it has been better than this. Yeah, although you do get paid quite well and you do have an easy time. Yeah, but don't give me the CDs then. If it was a milkman, you don't go, oh, I have two bottles of semi-skimmed. Happy yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a valid point. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Who uh, Who is it who made the decision? Oh, it's is it? no point. No point, is it? Why? Just no point. I don't like moaning anyway, just... <laughs> Has it come from up top? Is it yeah. like from the capital people? Just, just everyone. That's what everyone gets. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, well, will Christian get two CDs for getting up at four thirty every day for about five years? And keeping this station afloat. Mm, probably. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I'm a bit fed up. What yeah. are you listen to first, Marley or Leon? Well, you have, uh, have a bit of yeah, a bit of Marley. I'll tell you what Marley's good for as well. You'll have a little beach holiday, aren't you, over Christmas, going to Lanzarote? Mm. Listening to that on the beach, you'll 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 realise how wise XFM are in the long run. <laughs> you know, you go, well, look, they could have given me four hundred quid, right? Well, I just spent that, but this is, you know, the legend it's lives the on. It keeps on giving. So you probably, you know, what I mean, think how much those. What you got to think of is how much those all his great songs took, not only from it, from the depth of his soul and you know uh, uh, it, all his sort of angst and knowledge and love. And then all the studio time, the marketing, and you know, they're just giving you one that. They go, oh, don't worry about that, Carl, you have it. And you go, what? All the time we spent with Bob Marley and everything. Yeah. You have, <laughs> it, Carl, have it, Carl, have it, Carl, have it, have it, Carl. Have it, Carl. And then, yeah, have that, have that. Thanks, thanks, well done. Carry on. We're still gonna pay you for the work. Yeah. That's just some on top. It's a little piece of Bob, free. Yeah, so don't moan, it's extra. So, I didn't have to give you it at all. Play a record, you ungrateful little swine. Some people, like the homeless, aren't getting anything this Christmas. This is my favourite. Elvis Costello track of all time. It's Alison. This wasn't on the list. <laughs> right? <laughs> Elvis Costello? Alison on XFM 104.9. So, that's it. If, well, maybe, I'll tell you what, a good idea, Carl, just beg. Just ask for, get asked for other things. What do you want? What do you want for Christmas? You must have a big fan base out there willing to make you things. Maybe like a little, I don't know. Gloves, a pair of gloves. Just a little hat. Do you want to send a uh, necklace in for Suzanne? That'd be handy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's what she wants. Is Suzanne listening today? No, she's out. Right. Okay. This is the dilemma. 
me and C Steve yesterday were trying to convince Carl that it would be a good idea to buy Suzanne a Christmas present. Mm. Okay. Now, what? Wh why aren't you going to buy a Christmas present? Explain, Carl, why you don't think you should buy a Christmas present. No, well, I've told her I'll get her one, but in the new year. We're going away on holiday and that, so yeah. there's no point taking stuff away. Yeah. Going to Lanzarote next week. Just get her something in the sales after Christmas, for this, yeah? Yeah. Right. And we, me and Steve were trying to explain to Carl that she would love it if you bought her something on Christmas Day. Yeah, but she knows now. D but, Knows yeah. what? I've told her. So no, well, I'm gonna tell you, you know, right, this, dear listener, this was Carl's worry. I said, I bet she's got you something. And Carl was worried in case he got her something and she hadn't got him something. Yeah, he'd be livid. He didn't want to be down. He didn't <laughs> want to be a present down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his face! So buy her a nice necklace. Don't spend, just spend 100 quid, you know, just a little token. We're going away. We're not taking her away on holiday. They're not taking her away on holiday. What, what, you're paying for it, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you really? Well, half and half and that. Right. So you're paying for you to go on holiday? <laughs> That's good of you. So the gift is your company, really? <laughs> She's done all right. She's done all right! <laughs> Why do you talk like you're 60 years old? <laughs> and you've been the... working down the mine? <laughs> <laughs> She's- I love that. She's done all right. Do you go home to her and say, Suzanne, you're bloody lucky. I mean- You've fallen on your feet. Look who you've it, got. What? I'm not sure she has done all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be critical, but- <laughs> Oh, dear. So what are you going to get in the sales? What are you going to get her? Yeah, it depends. Um, I'm thinking, I mean, I'll give her the choice, she can have Kingsley and all Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll let her decide there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. dear. Oh. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Where, where are you going, Lanzarote? Yeah. Where's that? I don't know, Suzanne sorted it. I, I, I said, I said, I said, uh, Lanzarote, I said, is that, I said, is that Africa or is it? Spain or Portugal? Just thought you was Dunno, I went, what do you mean Dunno? Well, what's the currency went? Don't know. I said, Suzanne booked this one, did she? Uh, yeah. I thought, uh, so, um, where is it? Is it, is Lanzarote African or? Foreign. Somewhere, somewhere uh, foreign. I was looking last night and, uh, doesn't look that good. <laughs> there was, there, like, one of the highlights of the things it says you've got to do is go and have, uh, apparently they've got restaurants in caves and that's like mm. one of the things they say you must do. Mm. So, <laughs> if that's a highlight, do you know what I mean? <laughs> So I'll do that. Go and see what that's like. Yeah. When you're on the beach, Carl, do you wear the very, very tight speedos? No. Do you walk around with them? Uh, sort of longest shorts, yeah. t-shirt on, probably with a sort of a light shirt on top of that. Right, sure. So uh, quite quite wrapped up then. Covered up. Do you wear a hat? Because obviously the bald head there is <laughs> risk of sunburn. Uh, no, I just put a bit of lotion on it. Lotion on there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, just have a bit of a wander. Wander down the beach, have a look. Yeah. See if there's any old blokes with their tackle out and a backpack. <laughs> I'll have to look forward to, so. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, uh, we're looking forward to finding out how you get on. Yeah. Like and, you know. uh, interested to know what she gives you on Christmas Day. Uh, uh more scintillating chat after this next song. Alright, better placebo. Yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it. Special needs. <laughs> <laughs> placebo, special needs on XFM. 104.9. Email him where Lanzarote is. I don't know if it's Italy or Spain or Europe or maybe Africa. You know, these are the sort of things, these are the reasons I come into it to, 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 to at least learn something, innit, Carl? We've stopped educating Ricky, so I've stopped, I've stopped learning, you know, about things like the woman who had mud all her life. I and, thought you were uh, before when we were in the office. What, what did you, well, go on, what was that? What did you teach me? Uh, they've just counted how many fish are in the scene, though. No, they what? haven't. Just done a census. A whatever. census. What, a fish? Yeah, some fellas have gone in the sea and it's, they've got to work out. There's about. Mrs. Spratt, is this. Do your son know he's a lodger? Okay, well, let's mark him down. That's two. Oh, I've lost count. Six million four and. Oh, darn. So how many are there? About. There's a lot. There's <laughs> 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 oh. Well, there are more species of fish than bird, mammal, and reptile put together. That's, that's on my DVD of animals. That's still available oh. in the shops. <laughs> Probably, uh, find it online, you'll get that slightly cheaper. Uh, 15 What? Go on, ask me a question. Ask me a question. Ask me a question. Ask me a question. Carl's Pilkington source on the DVD. Yeah. That's a perfect Christmas gift. Yeah. Um, Go on. Yeah, this is a question. I was discussing this yesterday. I'm not- this is not a bit of shit, this is not a joke. I genuinely have always- always been slightly perplexed, and we were discussing it last night. The notion of the birds and the bees. Yeah. Now, I don't mean, 
you know, the birds and the bees. I no. understand now, you why, know. Why they use the birds and the bees? Yeah, cause, well, you see, I always, as a child, I never, no one, I assumed the bees were having some kind of relations with the birds. No. So what's, what, is there anything to do with the birds and the bees, or is it literally, uh, you know, just like a euphemism? It's just, uh, oh, the birds and the bees. No, but they, they- Do the birds do anything with the bees? No, no, not at all. It was where parents- just take them out, they it was where parents them. used to, to sidestep the issue by saying things like, you know when a lady blackbird and a, and a man blackbird, they meet, right, they make a little nest, and then because they're in love, they have an egg. Yeah. And that was it. I understand that, that makes sense, but why the bees? Why the birds and the bees? Um, well, Probably, um, I don't know. I don't know. You see, I, 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 within nature, forgive my ignorance, within well, nature there well, is no relationship between bees well, no, and birds, is there? No, no, not at all, no, not Nothing's at all. Nothing's going on. But probably what it was, it was, it, if the parent found it hard to say, you know, daddy puts his penis at mummy's vagina, it was much easier to say, like, in the insect world, billions of them queue up and just fill the queen with spunk for about a day. <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, avoiding yeah. the embarrassing <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> exactly. That's my, what I think, Carl. What do you think? Were you were you taught about the birds and the bees? Did anyone bring that up with you? No, Carl? it was just in that class, wasn't it? When uh, put a video on. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> what that's what we had. No, we had a film. And they just said, "Leia, I watched that." And then uh, what film? Right? Though? Basic Instinct. It was just just like you know, two two people, and uh, all sat around the telly and watched it. One girl fainted. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, right, that's that. Next week, you know, prisms. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and did it teach you everything you needed to know? Uh, well, how much do you need to know? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> no, true. Except one kid in my class still thought a baby came out of an ass. <laughs> Afterwards, he didn't understand. <laughs> I think what they should have shown on those videos is technique as much as anything. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Because yeah. it was largely just instructional. Wooing. Mm. Mm. Wooing. What it didn't tell you was how to get into a position where this <laughs> might be of some interest. <laughs> that should have been the first four weeks of the course. Yeah, well, obviously that baby, who had a, the, the kid who had a baby. What was going on there, Carl? That was that was weird. Did you see that? Yeah, that was going to be your favourite programme, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't that good in the end. What, Why? This is, you told us about this story ages ago, didn't ages you? Ages ago. I told you about, about a year ago about a baby that had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's a bit different. The baby that had a baby, isn't it? Whereas a Siamese twin with a with a, a, a breach um, actually just you know developed in, inside him for you know just well it wasn't even developing. Uh, it was uh, a, a, a twin stillborn that um, just was inside. Mm enveloped in the other one's body, so it's a little bit different to a baby, what had a baby, isn't it? Yeah. Actually disappointed he was. Mm. Do you know what he said to me? He went, well I thought it was gonna come out, and yeah. go, oh bloody hell I'm seven, what a waste of my life. <laughs> like it had been yeah. in there going, oh, hello, <laughs> yeah. hello, I'm seven. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, a bit disappointing, but there was a programmer after that, right? <laughs> um, at ten o'clock on Discovery, and I haven't got Discovery. Oh, it was about. Good? Oh, I didn't see it. This oh, is it. Okay. I was going to say to people if they've got a copy of it on tape, if you can send it in. What was it? Uh, about a baby with four legs. <laughs> right. That's that was on at ten on. It wasn't a puppy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing up there? <laughs> yeah. It's my baby. <laughs> oh, is it mum? All right, then yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh, he's got four legs, yes. Yeah. Sometimes they do have Look, four Dad's legs. gone, he's never coming back, you've it got to get over it. <laughs> so, if anyone's it's got a baby, send it in. Oh right, dear, okay, send it good. in, so you want a tape with a baby with four legs. You're gonna be disappointed again. It's not gonna be like a baby with four legs who's running round, running up the curtains. You know what I mean? It's not gonna be that. They're probably, it's probably gonna be two legs and then two sort of like floppy appendages. You know what I mean? It's not, they're not gonna be brilliant, it's not gonna be like Jake the Peg. You're gonna be disappointed. Apparently Lanzarote is one of the Canary Islands. Oh, is it? Although we've also been told it's part of Spain. Right. I don't yeah. know who to believe. I don't know who to believe either. Um. That's put, that puts me back, cause I knew it was either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew it Um. Where about it? Pilot knows, doesn't he? Huh? Pilot knows where he's going. Oh, I thought so, yeah. Doesn't matter then. No. Right, we're we playing Jayhawks. Let's play it. <clears throat> Love it. Got bored with that conversation, did you? Long and winding road. I love that, mm. but I don't like the way McCartney sings 
here. And there's just one, he goes, uh, you leave me waiting here. Well, he's always got that slightly affected- But it sounds like me. Richard Burton or something, here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only one that does it, but mm. I don't know why. Mm. I just think he likes it or wants to go back and change it, maybe it's like- But having said that, you know, I'm not taking away from the Beatles, one of the best bands ever. <laughs> well, yeah, good luck Brilliant them. songwriters. Oh, um, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had a lot of emails, Carl, I don't want to sort of put a damper on your Christmas, but a lot of people have been slagging off Lanzarote. One of them just said, well, one of them just, I, let me, I don't know if I can find it. It is Canaria, right? isn't it? It's Grand it is the, the, one of the Canaries, isn't it? It's a volcanic island covered in volcanic dust. It's very windy, so you have to dig a hole to sit in on the beach. <laughs> and there's hardly anything to do. <laughs> That's from Mike Godwin. And he says, uh, unless you like quad biking. Well, you know, you've seen what happened to, uh, no, don't go quad biking. Don't do Not with your little head. There's no protection at all. Is there? Mm. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know. At least Rick Mann and Ozzy had lots of hair. You, you, yours would, you'd be like Humpty Dumpty. It would crack like a little egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'd seen, yeah, there's no kings or kings horses. So, yeah, yeah, well, they, could, they couldn't do the job anyway. No, they shouldn't them. really send them. They're not really yeah. qualified. Send a, not equipped to send put a, back a medical man like Neil Fox in. <laughs> yes. To mend but not eggs. Not some kind of military horse. I bet he's had egg on his face a few times, hasn't he? What, Foxy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Most of the series of Pop Idol. <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl. Lanzarote, good or bad? Well, you got to give it a go, haven't you? Yeah, well <laughs> done. <laughs> give yeah. everywhere a go. Exactly. That's what I was saying. You know, don't just take the word for it. I mean, I mean, if it had said an Ananova, mm. uh, Lanzarote shit, he'd have believed it. Sure. You know, if he'd have overheard it in a pub, <laughs> yeah. Lanzarote, a crap, he'd have believed it. <laughs> he'd have seen it on a website mm. that was mainly concerned with monkeys and witches, <laughs> he'd have believed it. Yeah. As it yeah, is- ev Everybody raves about New York and when I went there I thought it was rubbish. Well you're an idiot then, cause yeah. that is the- Subjective possibly though, the greatest city subjective. in the world, along with London. Subjective though. That's why they have holiday programs and that, innit? So you see it and you decide for yourself and that. Yeah, but you saw, um, Venice on a holiday program as you put it. You went there and you went as rubbish, full of black bin liners. Well, it is. Right. Didn't they it, show them? It stunk. Didn't Tudor's Charmer say that? Uh, oh, it stinks here and there's loads of rubbish everywhere. No, she didn't. Didn't she mention that? No. Oh, that's what I mean. <laughs> so it depends what you want from holiday, doesn't it? Well, yeah. But so. You're an idiot if you don't like New York, so next. Anyway, come on, don't, come break up, guys. Kiss and make up. Yeah. Um, Carl, we've had an email. Some old rockbusters. Um, someone's emailed in, they wonder if you can get some of your old Rockbusters clues, your old genuine Rockbusters clues. I know Rockbusters has come back Well, of course he can, through. it's the way his brain works. Well, indeed, but uh, I think you'll, uh, maybe you can also enjoy the challenge, Rick. Yeah. And, and you at home. I remember them as well, because I remember how angry they made me. <laughs> some old Rockbusters. Uh, that army's got some well nice trenches. DW. Uh, that army's got some well nice trenches. DW. No. Dandy Warhols. That one works. It's though. not bad, is it? That's why I didn't get that one, because it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's only got one sticker left. It, you, it was actually he's only got one sticker left. Oh, okay. He's only got one sticker left. Uh, oh, the band His Last Sticker. <laughs> exactly. With Justin Fishman, yeah, His Last Sticker. Yeah. They were brilliant, weren't they? I, uh, what happened to His Last Sticker? Are they still going? <laughs> he'll, he'll strap some chocolate to your feet. That's A. A band or artist, A. Eh? He'll strap some chocolate to your feet. Go on. Aerosmith. I don't know really what that means, but. And finally, um, you'll have to. Aero cobbler. <laughs> well, yeah. The well known, uh, Aero cobbler. <laughs> and you'll have to stick her in the oven, A B. You'll have to stick her in the oven. See, he thinks, he thinks, um, blacksmith means, like, just shoes. Like, it's not the smith, the, it's the smith part. Mm. A smith is just a, a right, isn't it? So it doesn't work, I don't know, Aerosmith. What does that mean, Carl? What well, does that come mean? come on, you'll have to stick her in the oven, A-B. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? But it doesn't work. Well, apparently it does, you'll have to stick her in the oven, A-B. Single or artist. What, Anita Baker? Anita Baker. Why, why you have to stick her in the oven? Anita Baker. <laughs> oh, I need to. Mm. But why didn't you say, like, um, you'll have to, uh, um, get his hair cut and put a nice white, um, chef's hat on. That's a neater baker. See, that works. That works, Carl. I need to bake her. Doesn't work. It is shite. <laughs> okay, well, right. listen, uh, before you judge, listen to today's Rockbusters. Okay. They're here with us now. Here's Carl Pilkington. Yeah, back just for Christmas. Mm. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. I've, I've only got two, really, cause- Oh, what? Because oh, I was- Christ. I was trying to work one out before, right, in my little room. I was looking at different band names thinking what can I do. Yeah. Couldn't concentrate because Ricky was in there 
try to spray deodorant all over the place. <laughs> right? Mm. Uh, well, you should have done them yesterday. You should have, you should have shut me out. Right. So there's just two. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I've kind of got an idea for the third oh, one. Fine, oh, yeah. I'll have a go. Yeah. Right, so anyway, the first one. Should we uh, play a record and come back to this? We'll, we'll do it quickly. Yeah. We'll do it quickly. No, 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 no play a record. record. This is rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish. Libertines. It's useless. Give me the gifts, let me have a little price you've got. <laughs> Libertines, don't look back into the sun on XFM. Well, the general public are getting involved with, um, Carl's holiday and I mean, this has been a damning report on Lanzarote. There's not been a positive word written about Lanzarote so far. Wow. It's volcanic, there's no natural water Apparently supply. Sorry, there's no natural water supply. It's you all have to imported. sit in a hole. What do you think of this, Carl? What, what do you think of the people that want the, what, do you to know that you're going to a rubbish place when you can't change it? What it do you think of that? will be rubbish though, will it? What do you it'll mean? Be all right. What do you mean it'll be right? Because I'm gonna go there thinking, oh, there's no water and that, and there will be water. No, they didn't say there's no water. What did they say then? There's no natural water supply. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not bothered. It doesn't bother me. Alright. I'm gonna have a good time and that. What are you gonna do? What are you planning to do? Got a book. What, you, what book you got? A uh, rich old book. I'm just yeah. gonna read that. So Brilliant. And the weather's better than here, isn't it? Yeah. So. Someone, uh, someone emailed just now. They said they're listening online and there's a problem with their computer and everything's sped up. The music's sped up. Our voices, Rick, are sped up. Except Carl's. <laughs> That's how slow he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> so when everything's yeah. sped up, he sounds a normal. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, come on. Listening Steve, online. Do you want to wow. do the, uh, clues? I wouldn't want the clues, I'd never be able to piece them together, but I'll give you the prizes. Uh, The Old Grey Whistle Test Volume 2, <laughs> Kumar's at number 42, Volume 2, or maybe that's Volume 1, who cares? <laughs> Porridge, Series 3, Volume 2, The Office, Complete Second Series on VHS, for anybody uh, who's still got grandparents. And, um, you two are best of 1990-2000. And Smash Hits The Reunion, that'll be the Carl. kind of stuff you love. Spice Girls is on there, Liberty X, Atomic Kitten. Do you see that? Do you see Steve's enthusiastic? Even though the, the, the competition's rubbish, the prize is a second rate, Steve is going, well I'm not gonna punish London, right? I'm gonna big it up. You're there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Come on. Right, here's clue the one. first Come clue. On. Clue one. Uh, Come on. Uh, Come on! Shut up! <laughs> Come on! Can't do any photos because it's been nicked by what? a German. <laughs> oh, right, start again. Oh, cr- start again. What? Clue one. Rockbusters, clue one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is Rockbusters with Carl Pilkington. Go! I can't do any photos because it's been nicked by a German. And what's the initial? AC. <sighs> right? Next. S- second clue. If you keep eating, this bit of your body Oof. will get bigger. PC. PC. It's an artist or a band, who is it? PC. <laughs> if you keep eating, this part of your body will get bigger, right? Yeah. And the last one I'm not really sure about. Oh. Um, if you... <laughs> <laughs> He's actually winging it now. Imagine if this was mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about it. I know you're especially subject Come on! Uh, okay, go! The, the place where you go to oh, take your dog a walk and that. The, t- the place where you go to take your dog oh, a walk. It, then. No, we'll do it! No, do it! Oh, Get okay. you! Tim Burgess. Oh, my Corazon, is that? Yeah. <laughs> What's that mean? I have no idea. Phone in if you know. No, it's... don't bother. Oh, oh, email then, at least. Yeah, okay. I'd like to know these things. Sure. Um, we were doing a Rockbusters just before the ads and the record, Rick. I know you were enjoying it. Yeah, come on, get this clue out, Carl. It's three. What is it? Right, the first one was... No, no, we don't look at the first two. What's can't the do any photos because oh. it's been nicked by a German. Yeah. Second one, if you keep eating the, uh, if you keep eating, this bit of your body will keep getting bigger. Yeah, it's different every time. Go on, what's the third and, one? And, um, w- where you take your dogs oh. for a walk and that, or you might go there on a Sunday. What? Um, sort of... Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Right. Please, Rick, just be quiet for just a moment. Right, okay, do this clue. Right, start from now. This is the third blockbuster, sorry, rockbuster clue. That was a Freudian slip. Yeah, God, oh, we'll get done. Oh. Right, go on then, go. Where you take your dog a walk, or you, or uh, you might go there on a Sunday and that. Um, <laughs> people sort of might taste that area. <laughs> right? Oh, you are. It's rubbish. A P. Right. A-P. Well, the other one's A P as well. A P. What? 
AP. Reproductive right. ace, ace A quick reminder of them again with the initials. Quick, oh, go. this is such rubbish. The first one, can't do any photos because it's been nicked by a German. Second one, if you keep it. What was the initial? AC. If Don't you get annoyed, that's what the, the game's about, the initials! Yeah. If you keep eating, oh. this bit of your body will get bigger, that's PC. Right. Right? And where you take your dog maybe on a Sunday and you go for a walk there and that, have a taste of it. <laughs> <laughs> different! AP, AP, just email in and you win some stuff. Ricky.Gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. What rubbish. I wonder why we stopped this game. Well, I think it's probably exhausted him. He needs to go to some kind of volcanic dust island. <laughs> <laughs> With no water, yeah, exactly. just to dry out and get some new ideas. Oh, I'd love to see you sitting there <laughs> like on the, on these on black ash sands, just yeah. sitting there going, I'm thirsty, Suzanne. <laughs> There's no I've finished, water. I finished my rich old book, I can't focus, I'm going blind, I need some water. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, bless him. Anyway, happy Christmas. We said we weren't getting out, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> right, go on then. Um, Oh, dear. it was the premiere. Did you see the coverage? It was a premiere of uh, Lord of the Rings Part oh, Three. Oh, I can't be bothered. I mean, man alive, I'm sick of Lord I of the Rings. I watched the first one, and I was actually quite. I've never been into all that sort of stuff. Never liked Gollum it. Gollum and Dungeons and Dragons no. and gatekeepers and weird magic and Harry Potter makes. I want to punch his face in. <laughs> I know what you mean. But I mean, it's sort of like oh. Well, Lord no. of the Rings. When I was at school, if you were into that sort of thing, you were a nerdlinger. They would beat you up. They would exactly. shout heckle abuse, all that sort of thing. You know, I, I wasn't. A fan. I actually don't know anyone who admitted they were into that. I nonsense. know. It was shameful. It was embarrassing. Now the whole world's gone crazy for it. Even the tough guys, the hard nuts, the streetwise kids, they're loving it. Can't wait for the third one. I see people raving about it. It's Jonathan Ross. All these people going, "It's the best thing I've ever seen." It's three hours and ten minutes of trolls and goblins and magic spells and large feet and magic rings. I'm loving all that crap. <laughs> What's wrong with I you know. people? I will smite you with my sword. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. just interminable. The orcs and the norks. I saw and the... some. I saw some people playing this game. They had a big manual and a dice, and they're in a pub, and they all had. They're all fat with beards, right? And he threw a dice, and he went, looked down, and he went, um, and he said something like, um, um, uh, outside them, uh, the three, three miles to Mumra, and they went, oh, well done. What? <laughs> I, know. I was. I want to go and say, what is this game? Yeah. What? It's absolutely extraordinary. Well, they showed some coverage of the Lord of the Rings, um, premiere on TV, and there were people dressed up as some of the characters. Yeah. There was a girl chanting, saying, well, I just think Gollum's hilarious. What? what? People talking about telling me Gollum's hilarious in this new film. How is he funny, my precious? All my precious. What's funny about this? I, I'm losing it. I'm That's genuinely- it. Is he like Yoda? I don't, I, like know, Yoda. I don't know what the joke is. I, I'm missing it all. And when the walking trees started talking, Oh man, I love it. Gollum, like Gollum's the little one that looks a bit like Gandhi. Sort of yeah, exactly. The yeah. computer animated Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that alright? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's how he's described in the book. <laughs> But so, this is the other thing I say, oh, then they go, oh, well, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, he's a genius. You know he created his own language? Whoopee! Carl comes up with a new word every week that he's made up. <laughs> he he's not a he? genius. Yeah, well, that bloke, the bloke, a look of frighteningness <laughs> came across his it? face. Frighteningness. Yeah, Carl's new word. Although, you know, Shakespeare uh, introduced 1,200 words in the English language, apparently. Well, he was a genius. He's estimated. And I only know one of them. Yeah, what Brilliant. Was Brilliant? Yeah. How did he come up with that? I don't know. I reckon he was- uh, maybe he was reading Macbeth and went, I'll tell you this, this is brilliant. Yeah, and his wife said, what? This is brilliant, I'll tell you this, this is absolutely brilliant. I don't know what you mean. Sort of. Will. Oh, sort of better than good. Read it, see what you think. Well, it's good, yeah, but I mean- Read it again. Well, it's, well, it's getting better each time. Is it brilliant? It is brilliant. Yeah, see? Yeah. I don't I, know how you- I just- when the audience were there I on know, that first night- it wasn't brilliant. I don't know, it wasn't brilliant, it was excellent, he came up with. Well, fair enough, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. But on the first night- when everyone was in the theatre, you know, the dregs, the Carls of the, of the Middle Ages, they're still sat there. The Renaissance, I should say. They're all yeah. sat there watching it. They're enjoying the play. They're loving it. All the kind of people dressing up or whatever it might be. The boys playing the girls. The girls not involved. All the rest of the, yeah. the, 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 loving it. I'm loving this. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's gonna kill her. Da, 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 da. Well, forsooth, it was excellent. I don't know what that means. Yeah. You've lost me. Excellent. I'm sure off. Yeah, was it, uh, what? It was what? Wow, you know, excellent. I don't see how you can make up words. It's like, it doesn't seem that that's, that doesn't count in poetry. Well, I suppose you have to, don't you, eventually, if you want to describe something. Why? Just well, use the words that exist, isn't well, that the no, rule? No, but we- no, that's why we borrow from other languages. There are certain phrases that can't be translated, because mm. it's the- that there aren't- there, there are no words in other languages for them. Mm. I mean, we- I think we beat the second language by about double. I what think language? We, I, I think uh, in English, we have got about, I think Russian second, but I think we got twice as many words. So there are obviously things that we say that cannot really be translated. Yeah. 
And so, uh, you know, ours is just great for, uh, obviously, poetry and- It makes know. sense when you think about things like blancmange. Blancmange is good, yeah. That would be like yeah. wobbly pudding. I know. In English. But I think if there are- I don't know how many there are, someone would know. Say there's about a hundred thousand possibilities, right? I think we- we probably know, as educated people like us, Steve, we probably have about twenty thousand. Sure. Right? I really don't think we need that other 80,000. No. I can't- I, I'm not walking around <laughs> going, I don't know what they're talking about. Exactly. I I'm really- what did he say? What yes. is that? I mean, that happens possibly once or twice a year mm. when I go, what- sorry, what does that- what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Carl, you look bored, mate. We had a real I, conversation I think there. he switched off when I said forsooth. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Forsooth, you know him. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 so much better than last week. You know him, don't you? Carl? Got a song on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. boards. Okay, there was a monkey, right? Ah, no, he's no, no, right, right. It was a professor of English. <laughs> no blue sky, the thorns. That's beautiful, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. Carl, you're losing your rag a little bit. What's the matter? Nothing gone. See? What's the matter? No, what's well, the matter? I've got girl? something to cheer him up. Someone's okay. emailed in, Emma's emailed in. She said that, um, <laughs> for those that know, those in the know, they referred to Lanzarotti as <laughs> Lanzagrotti. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, He's well. a bit fed up. He's got two CDs for Christmas from a company that's been with for six years. Mm. He's a little, little bit grumpy about having to answer the phones. Hmm. Yeah, uh, he wouldn't go and make Steve another cup of tea immediately. <laughs> Selfish. Yeah. Carl, what are you thinking? Nothing. Go on, what were you, what were you doing? Come on, Carl, you're getting paid for this. Project. Out. We'll take one of those CDs away. Alright. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? <clears throat> Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Sick of it, as I say. Mm. Um, so there's some people dressed up on TV. They were dressed up as the characters, they had their sort of costumes. There was a guy I remember, there was a guy I went to university with, uh, I don't want to mention his name, went into his room once, he's, he's into that sort of thing. In the, he showed me in his wardrobe, he had a full-size Star Trek outfit. <laughs> that his mum had made for him. That his mum had made yeah. for him! But I wanted to say, well, A, you've taken this to university, but B, when are you gonna wear that? Yeah! When are you ever in the mood to wear that? Well, you know, you never know when, uh, it, you know, like on Apollo 13, wasn't it, when someone had, uh, measles or something, someone else got in. <laughs> sure. So he might go, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it. The Enterprise, uh, a uh, uh, who can't make it. But it's the idea of that being, you know, I'm not one to speak, but it's that idea of that sort of being attractive to women. Because that's presumably generally when you're at university, when you're 18, 19, that's the reason you wear those kind of clothes, is to try and make a bond with someone, isn't it? Try and establish some kind of connection. Yeah. Saw a guy walking down the street the other day, must have been 18, 19, wearing an honest t-shirt, just had a picture, and the, the words, um, Star Wars Phantom Menace. <laughs> Yeah, well I like them as well. Yeah, yeah. They're supposed to be kind of kooky and eclectic t-shirts, aren't they normally? They're supposed to be a bit sort of radical and a bit my, offbeat. Uh, my favourite though are, um, I, I love fat goths. Yes. I really love Who fat goths. Who are still goths. persevering with it even yeah, in their uh, uh, Yeah, I, I like your fat young ones. I love fat 18 year old goths. I really like them. They're uh, one of my favourites. And I like 42 year old goths. <laughs> yeah. Who, they, they've losing all their hair, they just grown at the back. But, you know, I don't know, I don't know what jobs they do, but their, well, their main hobby is looking like Nosferatu and yeah. wearing lots of silverware. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's one of my favourites. I don't think I mentioned to you before, I saw a girl on the tube, she had a bag, and, uh, she was quite gothy. She had a bag and it had, th it sort of had like a Barbie's head kind of sort of defaced sort of yeah. from there and loads of badges and tassels and little motifs and odd things and she decorated the bag. And then had sort of things like, you know, um, legalise cannabis and ban the bomb, you know, and stop the war. Yeah. And I just wanted to grab her and say, um, you doing much about the war or are you working mainly on the bag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spent most of the year yeah, you've been in, in the petitions, are yeah, you doing yeah. the marches, collecting marches badges. the bag you're focused on. Oh dear. I'll tell you another thing, that one, a fashion mistake it always offends me whenever I see it, is an Englishman, yeah. of any age, yeah. wearing cowboy boots. I had cowboy boots. I, I, tell I can't you, believe it. I, when I was 18, right, I, um, I went out and got a pair of cowboy boots. The cheapest, I mean, they were the only ones I could afford. Awful. Why? I mean, was that they, were like, in... they were like clogs that came up to the knee. They were so uncomfortable. And why, and why did you get them? What, who was wearing them at the time that you that, that you thought they were cool? Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And I, I had cowboy boots. I put segs in them. What segs? With the little things you nailed into the bottom. So like, they sort of clip clop at you. Clip clop. Right. So I'm about 18, right? Uh, those tight jeans, so tight in fact, I thought I had, I, I had to went to the doctor and I said my balls are aching and I went off. I said oh, I've got a pain in my epididymis and all this, which I was doing biology. And he went, your jeans are too tight. They're squashing your balls, <laughs> right? 
Uh, so I had towel roots, right, and pale ones, not even sort of like finished properly, sort of like just the raw sort of leather, cheap wooden bits at the bottom sex, really tight Levi's, <laughs> and a red sweatshirt with bullshit on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a present. Just avoided on. I looked pretty hot, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and I remember once as well, this was, this was really embarrassing, I had leather jacket and, uh- How old were you? Oh, this is embarrassing, 26, I think. And I just had a nice leather jacket, right? But I was bored one day, and so it's about, uh, 1986, 87. Yeah. 87, must have been. And, uh, I just painted on the lapel <laughs> a little acid. <laughs> 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 and that didn't last. And were I, you going to Acid House uh, Rage at the uh, time? No, of course not. No, no. But, but I remember, I remember that one didn't last long. That was in the bottom of the wardrobe immediately. Yeah. I knew at the time, I just thought, what the f- what yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I forg- I, I forgive anyone sort of anything up to about the age of 25, right? I don't know. But I mean, he's getting close there, yeah, but certainly up to age of 20. But it's the 40 year olds. It is yeah. the 40 year olds that yeah, yeah, yeah. just still have a little- have a little go. But, Goths are the best. Goths but, but, are Goths the best. Or, or the cowboy stuff, because there's never been a culture of cowboys in this country. I know, You know, yeah. so you see the 40-year-old guy with the kind of cowboy jacket with the tassels. Yeah. You know, or the bootlegs tie. Add that, add that, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you've yeah. been through most phases. This is what's been interesting to me about you, is you're yeah. now, you're quite self-aware. But the most committed one was probably the New Romantic when I first went to university, so, uh, you know, uh, 18, red bullshit t-shirt and tight jeans, within a couple of months, D- David Sylvian, just just full makeup and yeah. that, that, that. Can that. I ask? Because I, having never really subscribed to one of those fashions, yeah. one of those styles, yeah. with something like New Romantic, which is, you've got to be quite committed. Do you ease into that slowly? Start wearing a bit of nail polish, maybe an earring, and then you went, no, away, or you first, went whole hog. No, I remember the first time I did it um, was the sort of like the first disco in my first year. Um, just uh, borrowed someone's makeup, put it on, stopped at the chin, hadn't quite got the. <laughs> So right. I looked like a, sort of like a mannequin. Right. And then I sort of got better at it, I suppose. Right. Why right. did you look like David Sylvian? That, yeah. that was the idea, and then it sort of And like so you had to in. literally go out and sort of start again with your wardrobe, presumably. The cowboy boots went out, the tight jeans. You had to literally go to a shop and buy an outfit, a new romantic outfit. No, it was okay, because in those days it was a suit. So new, right. it was a new romantic, you wore the suit. It, oh, I, didn't, okay. I didn't wear all the sort of like, um, pirate gear and pixie boots. Right, and I sort right. of wore the suit and the- and luckily, I- before I went away, um, I bought a suit from my mum's catalogue, which was one of those <laughs> woollen ones that went bobbly. <laughs> so <laughs> not quite David Sylvia. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, at least I was having a go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, respect. Have respect. you ever subscribed to any of those fashions, Carl? Uh, no, nah, just, uh... Just going for the gay look now, aren't you? Where's Ben Sherman's and he shaves his head? I remember watching some Dr. Martins. <laughs> yeah. And my mum worked at a college in a canteen. And, uh, she knew what it- what it's some, but she got some, uh, there was an old woman who worked in the canteen who said she had some and it turned out to be like little granny boots. Having <laughs> 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 them for a bit. <laughs> With a little zip up the front. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, brilliant. Did you wear them? For a bit. Yeah. Oh, well, you uh, might as well. Yeah, yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> waste not, want not, play a record. Have some ads. Alright. White stripes. The hardest button to button. Steve, I've got to find out the answer. Mm-hmm. It's been driving me mad. How many words are there in the English language? Does anyone know? Define your terms. By English language, you mean English words. words yeah, I don't, I don't English. mean how many words are there in a dictionary with all slang, different, uh, deriv- how many, how many English words are there that you say were English words, you know, not, not, not but there are so many of them which yeah, are Yeah, but not phrases, from... not, not, not slang necessarily, not, not... But what about English words which are derived from French, Celtic, or the rest of it? Well, like, you know, cliché is okay, but they have in, they have load, they, yeah, they have other languages in them, but how many different English characters are there? Right. Because uh, I, I... There were some not news, characters. there was some, yeah. news, some news a few weeks ago about, uh, a fella who could, if you said a word to him, right, He'd say, yeah, that's on page 36 of the dictionary, right? And they said he remembered 80,000 words, right? So that's in a little dictionary. They said it's 80,000 words. Mm-hmm. Right, so does that clear that up? Well, I thought there was about 100,000, right, English words in use. Not counting all the, the other little bits and pieces, phrases, uh, slang. Like, I think... I is in there now. Ali G, popular 
Now, I don't know whether I should count that or not. Well, if you're one of our listeners, um, perhaps if you know somebody who finished school, <laughs> you could maybe pop next door, get them, ask them, and then email in the answer. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you've got an answer for that. Talking of email correspondence, Rockbusters. Oh. Rick is okay. underway. People Have we got monkey news? Absolutely loving that. Let's see if we can cram it in. Have we got a film? Yeah. We should do that then. Well, let's well, finish one thing and move on. Oh, Jesus, oh, calm yeah. down. All right, right. We, uh, let's get this third one out of the way because it's tricky. <laughs> um, so initials, when you say tricky, it's tricky to say. <laughs> <laughs> the initials were AP. It was, uh. Well, you take, you your, take dog your dog out on that, or maybe on a Sunday. You know, Come well, on, let him finish. Quick! Let him finish. You take your dog there. You might go there on a Sunday. Uh, have a taste of it when you're there. Right, that was AP. Uh, the answer. Alex Parks, right? <laughs> Alex. Alex Parks? Yeah. It kind of doesn't work, that one. D but- That what, one doesn't I, work, I, I, I know. I, I know, it's- You know, you know that one doesn't work? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well that's well, fine. That's, that's, that's fine. what I was trying to work out when you were messing around. What that's why it's not around? good. Okay, come on. The, the other ones. The first one was, uh, the German fella. Be can't do any photos because it's been nicked. What's the German that? fella can't do any photos because it's been nicked. That was, uh, uh. The initials were? AC. I've got it. I took right. It's, it, it's, 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 it's Aztec camera. Yeah. But what's that got to do with the German fella nicking it? Because the way he'd say it, he'd be like, you know, Aztec camera. <laughs> so why aren't you taking any pictures? Can't. Why? Aztec camera. Why is that German? <laughs> <laughs> just sounds a bit. Right, so you know that's rubbish then as well. You know that one doesn't work, do you? And the, s the second one was, uh, if you keep eating, this bit of your body will get bigger. PC, yeah? Phil, Phil colons. <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil col- Phil- <laughs> It's, uh, honestly, right, Carl. Phil colons. I, 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 Phil honestly, Collins. right, okay, I honestly, I don't know what the PC term is for this, but I honestly think I, I think you're quite bright, and you know, I think you're quite streetwise and all that things, but I actually think, oh, I've got to be so careful here not to offend people, but I think you might be- Could you maybe describe it through a sound? Um, you might be educationally subnormal. Does that worry you? No. I've got, I've, you know, I've got by all right, I'm not gonna worry about it now. You know what I mean? I'm 30. You know what I mean? Why well, start worrying about it now? But you've got the mind of a 12 year old. <laughs> So what? Sure. Do you know what I mean? I don't worry about stuff. If you don't know about stuff, you don't worry about it. Yeah. So I'm happy. Well, if he's educationally subnormal, I'm afraid also Matt Briggs of South East London is as well. Well done, Matt. Well done. Well done, Matt. Yeah. So he's won that stuff. He has indeed. Player record, we've also got your film quiz coming up and uh, Monkey News. We're all looking forward to that. Right. Monkey News. Is that a Bowie? Yeah, one of my favourite Bowie songs of all time, Letter to Hermione from Space Oddity. Oh. Have you got any Christmas shopping? I can show up and do that now. <laughs> Letter to Hermione, David Bowie. Well, we've had, uh, the most convincing answer, that it's about 290,000 actual words, but possibly three million in our vocabulary, using all jargon and scientific stuff and all that. Sure. 290,000. Still a lot, isn't it? It is a lot. We know so little, don't we? Apparently the average person has about 20,000 words in oh, their vocabulary right. and uses maybe 2,000 a week. Really? Yeah. Carl, obviously, it's like you're bringing that average down. Carl, look at that. Single figures. What's the matter? Get by. Why have you got to use longer words messing about and that? <laughs> Told you. That that word about old, anti dipuian or something. Just say old. <laughs> That's a bit old, isn't it? That's a bit anti to and that. What's the point? Yeah. Get to the point. Sure. Busy. <laughs> 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 right, okay, are you in a film this week, Carl? Uh, are we doing that now? Yeah, go on. Get it over with. Minute, get it over with. Let's get this show show over with. We can go home, you can go off to Lanzarote and sit on some ash. <laughs> some charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy about that. That's annoyed him. The listeners have all ganged, ganged up, up on him. him. Yeah. Uh, XFM giving him two CDs. We've had more calls for his resignation this week than ever before. What do you think of that, Carl? What do you mean? There's another reason. Do you know what I mean though? Because he's grumpy, he's not just giving it, he goes, well I can't help it, can I? I don't want it. You, you're totally being paid uh, well to do a job. People have tuned in to be entertained, to have good songs. Me and Steve are, are working I'm pressing here. the buttons, I'm paid to press the buttons, that's what I'm doing. 
Has every CD started on time? Then yeah. Then why'd you- why- why would they give you Monday off if you just paid to press the buttons? Don't get every other Monday off, do I? So have you stopped doing that now, have you? Well, yeah. Why? Cause there's work to do in that. But I'm not moaning about it, let's get on with it. Right, Scrooge, right, is the film that I'm in. Thought I'd do a Christmassy one. Okay. Right? Yeah. Get people in the Christmas mood and that. Yeah, yeah. you have, yeah. You have got people in the Christmas mood. You're uh, like Santa visiting them. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's you listen. in the film Scrooge. Yeah. Just Which yes. version of Scrooge? The old one. Is it if it's just you moaning with bells, I'll be annoyed. Right, right. That on. is essentially Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, Scrooge, listen to this and then there's some question at the end. All right. And you can win some stuff and that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're late. Only, only 20 minutes. What do you mean by coming in here this time of day, hmm? I've just, I've just been doing some Christmas shopping, haven't I? Probably do some more shopping on Monday, because it's my day off, isn't it? Yes, I know it is. You don't have to tell me. You've got to see what I've bought, Suzanne? No, thank you. I don't mind showing you. It's only, only a Christmas present, isn't it? Bought some more, uh, bought some more condoms. Why? Well, I bought some last year. Got two boxes. Uh, they all got used, so... I'm very glad to hear it. How much do I pay you? Why are you asking that the presents I buy has got nothing to do with what I earn? Like I say, if I, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't go mental on her. Do you know what I mean? I probably wouldn't even tell her because... I think she'd want to travel around the world and all that, and I'm not into that, to be honest, so I'd probably keep it quiet. Why? Well, once you've been around the world, where do you go next year? <laughs> Each to their own now, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, what do you want? What, what, for Christmas? Not that fussed, really. And you, it's, it's just as well I'm not that fussed, because do, do you know I do some work at, um, at XFM? Do you know what they're giving me for, for Christmas present? Nothing. No. Might, might as well have been nothing. Um, two CDs. That's it. I was well fed up. I'm sure you were. They give you a list of about 30 albums and you get to pick two off the list. So I've gone for, um, Kings of Leon album. And, uh, the best of Bob Marley. Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very day. Did I? Do you know, uh, do you know what sort of donuts Bob Marley likes? It's not my business. No, it's, it's not a proper question. It's an old Peter Kay joke. He likes the ones with jamming. Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Garlic bread? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Carl, well Carl in Scrooge there. Um, <laughs> the only man more mean and depressed generally than Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh dear. Oh. What's the God. question, Carl? Uh, well, if people have been listening from the start, right? Uh, what albums am I getting? Yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. What albums am I getting from, uh, for working for this place for six years? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Ricky Dr. Bays <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> Snow Patrol and Run on XFM. Wow. Nearly your last show, Carl, for about three weeks. Yeah. Carl's off to Lanzarote. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> next week. Uh, we're doing it with Ian Canfield next Saturday. Then we're off, because it's... Day after Boxing Day, isn't it? Or mm. 20, yeah. And then, um, we're back on the 3rd, I think, aren't we all together? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what have you got? I think we should have done something like some roundups, like Cheeky Freak of the Week. We could have done Cheeky Freak of the Year. What's your Freak of the Year, Carl, if I put it to you? What, out of all the ones that I found out about? Yeah, all the ones that have ever been, yeah. Well, no, you have the Elephant Man in there that you found out about at the end of the 19th century. <laughs> Go on. Um. Watched The Elephant Man again last week. Good. Good. Yeah, loved it. Um, probably that one, uh, the kid who was like, like seven, but aged to about 38. 
That was pretty weird. That amazed me. That sort of blew no, my mind. But no, it was worse than that. She was about 90 or something, wasn't she? She is now. <laughs> but, but back then- oh, oh, a couple of months ago she was 38, yeah. but cause of the aging. She's, she's yeah. sort of aged fast and that. Yeah. And it's really, uh, This is the one that you think should be allowed to get fags and beer and off licence cause she's got the body of a 90 year old. Well yeah, it's only fair, isn't it? <laughs> Let her have a decent life. Even though she's six? If she wants a packet of fags. <laughs> the doctor said, you know, you're older than that. Even though you're six, you are sort of 72. She wants a packet of fags, let them She was 72 September, wasn't she? Yeah. So, yeah. But it was that, that's probably Do you actually weird, think so. that would be a good idea to have a, to give a six year old with an aging disease a packet of fags? If that's and a, what they and want, a, if that's what they want. And a pint of tenants. All the stress and that she goes through. It was saying something about how she has to have a passport picture done every three months or something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Wow. That's what she's dealing with. So that, that was probably the way. Can we just say that Carl doesn't take the mickey out of these freaks? No. Uh, these people. He, I just, you know, it's things that fascinate me at mm. the end of the day. Yeah. Things like that are weird. Um, and things that, I mean, there's certain things that people get excited about that I think, well, what are you getting excited for? Like what? Um, news, just news. Do you know I normally do the headlines and that? Yeah. Uh, Have we got any headlines? Not really, because there isn't that much going on. Isn't that, there? That's what annoyed me, though. There was something <laughs> about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? And they were like, oh, brilliant. But I don't think that's that good. When someone's done it walking, where would the, where the woman, it. where would the woman who complained about you come in the years chart? That's what do you mean? yeah, that's the woman with the enormous head. <laughs> Lest we forget, yeah. she took offence to some of the comments you made on the show, and rightly so. I can, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, think I, was say, yeah. I was out of order, and you know, so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'll just uh, explain again that Carl. I mean, it was a, it was a, it's, the freak of the week is sort of like more of a punchy catchphrase than, than a derogatory term. Mm. In, uh, and Carl's fascination and childlike, I mean, I think we'd have to include Carl in the roundup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd be certainly well, be in the, the top fact, ten. I think the fact that she didn't sort of pursue any official complaints means that, you know, she's a bigger person than you, Carl. Yeah, really, because, you know. Certainly, you know. Well, you know, so. <coughs> <laughs> headways. <laughs> she is. Um, Carl, you're gonna do some news stories, you Well, the, the, like I said, there hasn't been that much going on. There's a sure. story about a fella who, uh, hasn't eaten for 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, he hasn't eaten, is that all the, that's all the information you're gonna give us? Yeah, hasn't okay. eaten for 70 years, uh, hasn't had a drink, but he's alright. <laughs> well, that's rubbish then, next. It's not rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, uh, next. Well, what, well, what is it? How is that? How is a man not eaten or drunk for seventy years? It's that thing, isn't it? Your, your belly gets used to it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, has he misinterpreted it or is it rubbish? It, well, it does, to be honest with you, it doesn't actually offer any explanation. It just says that it, that's what happened. Right, so that's it rubbish. It doesn't go on to Next. anything else. Um, a woman's had six organs transplanted. Um. Woman needed a new kidney, a new heart, a new stomach, a new liver, a uh, new kidney, intestine. Does that mean that she's the same woman? I know. <laughs> yeah. You'd just say forget it, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you though? <laughs> well, not really. You know, the organ is just a, a lump of tissue. You're, if you're, you're that, if you're that knackered, call it a day. <laughs> and don't waste time with that. Yeah. And, good. Uh, good there's advice. A woman, there's a woman who um, who hasn't slept for eight years as well. Well, that's, that's impossible. Again, you want to see that, Steve? Yeah. That's, that's the news for the week. Yeah, all rubbish. Fair Next. Next. Do you want to apologise once more for anyone you might have offended over the year? Yeah, I, I, like I say, I always, I never want to upset anyone. We're no, just it's just, stuff just, that's, it's just that's chatting, it's, it's from the heart. You see someone, you say, oh, it looks a bit like so-and-so, or isn't it a bit, you're not really, you know, you mm. don't really try and hurt anyone's feelings, do you? But I think, I think most people know that. And I mean, I, and I've got to apologise for laughing at anything you say. I actually can't help it. Again, it's not vindictive, but when Carl comes out with some of the things he says, I, I mean, I, it's impossible for me not to laugh or react. So, uh, have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, before that, Rick, is there some final, um, for the year, monkey news? Tell you what, let's play a, a good song. Okay. Right, we'll have a bit of monkey news, and then that's it. A All bit right. of Amy Man, then. Perfect. Yep. Brilliant, this one. No choice in the matter. By any man on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, now it's, uh, it's monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, before my new trick, can I just mention to people if they enjoyed that version of Free Love Freeway that we played earlier on the show, the kind of alt country version. Yeah. That was by Ben O'Sullivan, and hopefully, if you check out his website, if you're interested, you probably can download something, or maybe he'll uh, tell you when he's going to release it. That's BenOSullivan.com. One word: BenOSullivan.com. Good luck to Ben. Happy New Christmas to him, and New Year. Best of. Yeah, <laughs> rearrange these words into a well-known phrase exactly. of the time of year. Yeah. Initials MC. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Play the jingle. Oh, what is it? Chimpanzee that. Oh yeah, chimpanzee that. Monkey news. Right. Well, the last one of the year. <clears throat> it's not that good, but this is all that's been going on all week. Yeah. Uh, little monkey. Um, what happened is it's this plane, right? Aeroflot, I think it is, Russian airline. Um, <sighs> having a good, having a good flight. Everything's going normal and that. This is gonna be libelous. The the pilot. Sorry, I mustn't interrupt my side. The, the, was how tall was the pilot on this flight? Okay, listen, we've had a few complaints, people saying, don't but, interrupt, don't interrupt, Steve. Monkey okay. don't interrupt Monkey okay, News. Don't interrupt Monkey News. Okay, I won't then. It. It's like okay. the weather girl complaining whilst Trevor McDonald's doing that. Okay, all right. Go on then. Right. Go on then. All right, so, uh, the, you know, the flight's going well, food's been served and all the rest of it. Anyway, someone gets upset about not having many nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, they've not got enough nuts. Oh, they, okay. hand the, they hand the nuts out and that. One of the sort of passengers is going mental. What, what's, he, what's he saying? He's just, he's just What language mad. is he talking though? Is he Russian or English? So anyway, there's a bit <sighs> of a fight going on, a fight starts happening, people are going, what's up with that little fella, right? The little hairy bloke. So, uh, they, they sort of dragging- what's, what's wrong with Bob Hoskins? And why is he screaming? Why isn't he talking in his usual Cockney accent? Why is Bob Hoskins screaming and grabbing at nuts? So, um, you've ruined it now, right? <laughs> Come on, come no, on! Forget oh, it, forget oh, it, forget oh, it. Oh, oh, I'm ruined! Right, Rick, turn his microphone off, okay. he can't interrupt right. you. Right. So anyway, so there's a fight going on, nuts are going everywhere, right? So, um, anyway, so they, they manage to tie him down, they get him on the floor, tie his legs up and that, right? His little legs. Get him to the- <laughs> get him to- <laughs> Come on, come See on! See you later, have a good Christmas. No! Oh, how dare you! Finish the story! All that happened is they got back, uh, it turned out that he shouldn't have been on the plane anyway. Why? His passport wasn't valid. Right. Um, and you can't cause problems on planes and that. So, he got put in a cell for a bit, turned out it was a little monkey. Uh, right. Quick question, how did he complain about the shortage of nuts? Yeah. He just was going mental. Right, he didn't actually call over a stewardess, he just- Well, how did, how did he get on the phone in the first place? Right. What ticket did he have? Have a good Christmas and that. But yeah. you know it's rubbish. You See must you know that's rubbish. Right. You must best. know that's rubbish. All the best. You must know that's rubbish. Where is he going? Excellent. Comfort and sound. By Feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. But no Carl Pilkington. No He's Carl. in Lanza Grotti. Lanza Grotti. <laughs> but we have speak. got a very, very special stand in. It's Camfield. Say hello. I'm so excited to be here. It's yeah. been, you know, I, I, the things I've learned in the last ten minutes before we've even gone on air. Like, you yeah. don't have a theme tune. I don't have a theme no. tune, I don't wear headphones. Exactly. Ian wears headphones with a preamp. He's got three midgets just brought in his back line. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> they're called Dog, Mongo and Blitzkrieg. Look, Blitzkrieg is up on the, up there, they're eating a banana. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is the king of rock, the new king of rock, well, the young, the prince, he's the prince of rock, obviously Vance is the king of rock, but uh, we'll be doing that, we're working out who, oh, over this, um, and by the way, Camfield, I don't want the Ian Camfield that does XFM and going, and there's fast approaching 123, here's Ash, I want the Camfield that goes, I snorted ants with Lemmy, okay? So, <laughs> uh, we want the real Camfield. Alright, right. I bought him Metal Christmas, is that alright? Yeah. My, that's my only request from this show, that we do play Paul Diano's version of Santa Claus is coming to town. The Diano. Rest, the rest of That'll it's be up to you. Yeah, we're gonna play some Christmas tunes, we're gonna play some, you know, our favourite hits of the year, but mm -hmm. mainly this is the rock programme. This is the rock programme. What worries me, Rick, is there's a lot of people who listen to our show and they don't really, they're not regular XFM listeners, they just kind of crawl they're out They're not regular people. Stupid <laughs> <laughs> on yeah, a Saturday yeah. afternoon, put the show on, so yeah. they might not, they might not be familiar, they might not be familiar with well, the Well, Ian work. Canfield is a young man, he's been in, uh, he's, he's about uh, 14. He's, he's been in radio, it's weird, he's 14, but he's been in radio for <laughs> Fifteen and a half years. <laughs> yeah, um, he was weaned on the milk of a Vance. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, uh, he's gonna be the new, he's gonna be the new, um, uh, rock god, aren't you? Well, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no DJ Camfield. Just go, yeah! Right? <laughs> and over the, over the two hours, um, I wanna work out the four pillars of rock, right? I want four names, uh, four pillars of rock, right? Huge rock pillars, and then I want the king who stands astride them like the archangel of metal. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be asking Ian every few years. We're asking, right, who's your first pillar of rock? 
<laughs> and then, uh, you know, keep keeping the one that stands astride them, okay? And how many do we need? Well, we need five names then, don't we? The four pillars of rock and who stands astride <laughs> them. <laughs> right, okay. okay. Like the Overlord with these axe attack albums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Oasis. <laughs> Christmas. Oasis. Doing their version of Merry Christmas, everyone. It's Christmas. It seems only appropriate that we play the occasional Christmas tune. There aren't many decent ones. The great- we will be playing the greatest- not just Christmas, one of the greatest songs of all time, but certainly the greatest Christmas tune of all time, mm -hmm. Fairy Town in New York. Is that gonna be the, um, the, uh, version done by What's His Name out of Boyzone? Has he done one? Yeah. Because he's lived the hard rock and roll life. Who? Uh, 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 what's his name? Out. What is his name? Ronan Keating? Yeah. He yeah. wasn't bad on Room 101, actually. I think he's lightened up a little bit. Good luck to him. Yeah. Yeah, I no. do as well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, uh, Canfield, I'm sure you can, uh, kind of, uh, you've probably got experiences of your own that you might want to talk about, but, uh, people ask me what Ricky's like in real life. Mm. And I don't want to get grotesque. It's Christmas, people are listening, people are eating sandwiches, but he has a flatulence problem. I don't know if you're aware of this. It is- It's not a problem. Right. Well, it is for us. It is for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may not yeah. I think mean, no. the problem with Ricky is Ricky hates to miss out on anything. He's terrified that there's gonna be something going on that he's missing out on. A conversation, a joke, someone falling over, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he's down- he, so he don't spend any time in the lavatory, cause he just- it's too- <laughs> any sp period of time he spends in there, he could be missing out on some fun. <laughs> so he, he kind of tries to get his lavatory, you know, occupying down- time down to a minimum, an absolute minimum. Plenty of pissing. There's loads of that. But none of the other activity, <laughs> really. I mean, you keep that really- it's- it's like you're in, you're out, and you- I d sometimes I don't think you've done the full job, Rick. Yeah. And today, I'll yeah. tell you this, it was- my eyes were bleeding. <laughs> it was- it's intense. I, it's just a word of warning, because the kitchen at XFM is out of bounds now. <laughs> they, they, no one's going in there until the new year. A to J in the library. And a to J in the record library. I'll tell you this, if- I don't know if, like, Tony Blackburn's in the building. <laughs> his wig will fall off. But seriously- Not that he- no, no, not that he wears he, a wig. He doesn't wear a wig. But if he's going down there, maybe he wants to play some Beach Boys. I mean, seriously, <laughs> forget <laughs> I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> Forget you might have survived in the jungle, Tony. But you go uh, down there, mate. Tony, would you rather eat a plate of maggots or go and get oh, Beach Boys? Exactly. Are you saying H to J? Oh, pot pickers. Exactly. Jesus Christ. It is absolutely <laughs> extraordinary down there. <laughs> oh, so well, I'll just be warned. But it's Christmas. It's yeah. Christmas. Why would Blackburn be listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he's got- he's probably doing a bit of Christmas shopping. Sure. And yeah. he's out and about with his- probably got his little, you know, personal stereo on. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I'll listen to the boys at XFM. <laughs> exactly. And he, uh, Canfield, what do you think of it so far? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's not- not Vance, is it? Okay, who- who, who is secured as one of the pillars of rock? Lemmy. Of course he is. Never changes his boots. Two pairs of trousers. Three shirts. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just alternates them, does he? Yeah, so yeah, he might yeah. Have yeah. the same pair of trousers for two weeks, but the is it, shirt. is it true his rider is uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels and forty Marlboro? Uh, no, it's uh, it's like one of those hundred packs. No. Of, of yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the hundred packs of Marlboro, and the, he like keeps them stuck in his boots, which don't change. <laughs> Um, actually, I, I think I'm right in saying like that, that one of the like two left boots as well because one of them did break, so and he had two pairs, but he's now only got one. But they, uh, uh he's got yeah. The, well, the Lemmy, that was... is Lemmy then. Lemmy is one of the um, the uh, pillars of rock. What, what, what would Phil Linnett get anywhere near this? Yeah, he would have done. Let's play some Lizzie then. Don't believe a word, Finn Lizzie on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, and over there, Cam Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of me? Yeah. 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 The rock one's better. The rock one's better. Yeah, you shouldn't <laughs> try and be a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up with Diano Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, what, uh, I know you're, you're keen to know this, Rick. What yeah. are your thoughts on XFM? What, do you, you get, uh, just get behind the facade of Canfield. Yeah. What do you think about this? Cause we used to have, you know, some conversations, so, you know, um, You've been with XFM since the beginning, haven't you? Oh, I've been here forever, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all right, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's not quite magic. Well, no, I don't know if you got, think so. No. Got me eyes on, uh, on the, on the, uh, big 105.4, obviously, eventually. What, uh, magic? Yeah. Now, uh, do you, do you think you'll, if you want to do like a, a rock program on something like, like Virgin or Radio 1 eventually? No, I don't think so. No? No. What do you want to do then? What do you want to do? <sighs> I want to... I want to start playing stuff like the Eagles and Steely Dan and Bruce Hornsby in the range. Truth be known, but you, you'd have right. to go quite mainstream. Like in your that. bedroom, what? what but, on the, but on but on what sort of platform though? Because you know the good thing about those is they are really popular. They are. I mean, I think the Eagles' greatest hits is the biggest selling album of all time now. It's overtaken Thriller. Yeah. So I mean that that, that those. What are you saying? Uh, Iron Maiden aren't popular. Uh, like well, what I play Iron now. Are actually popular, but 
they've got a very slip tight fan factory. Base. I mean, the, the Iron Maiden can go to number one with just their fans buying it and then slip away again, can't they? Yeah. But everyone sort of likes the Eagles, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I think still. Uh, so you could play, so you could get on sort of like Radio, t Radio 2 maybe, the rock program on Radio 2, who does it at the moment, is there one? No, there's not one, should we, uh, I should do it down my way. Okay, well that's, let's, let's, I love the way we're talking about my career and other radio stations I could work for. Well, do you know yeah. something I don't? No, no. <laughs> no. I'm just saying that this, this, this place is going, not, it's, it's not going out the tube, isn't it? It's going out the tube. I mean, you're gonna be like, I mean, you're, you, 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 <laughs> You'd abandon the sink and shit, wouldn't you? You wouldn't hang around, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't fiddle, as Rome burned. I mean, we, we've got a couple of pies cooking in the States, so we're not gonna be here to keep it afloat. No. You know, the weekends. But we, 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 you know, we wanna take the good guys with us. Right. So, you know, when this crumbles and they make it into a car park for capital, I want to see you on Radio 2, Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, well, that's the pitch, isn't it? There Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Okay, if someone, anyone's listening to the BBC, it's Canfield. He is the new, new fan, fans. Mul Molten metal, maybe. Molten metal. That's good. My only concern with TV work for, uh, for Ian is he doesn't look like the obvious rocker. I mean, people are listening, they probably imagine no, he's got the long, the, greasy hair, but that's he's got the, the modern the look. t-shirt. Lots of modern bands no, now, I'm, they've got, you I'm know- I'm not slagging off, I'm just saying I wonder the, if the they've fans- They've got short hair. It's not all, it's not all long hair and strange beards and tattoos, No, the, the, the days of them all looking like Lemmy and smelling like Ricky sure. are <laughs> well, <laughs> and, well and truly gone, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had the long hair? Have you ever gone in for that? No. Never, never tried that? No, no, no. But I've got bullet belts and stuff like that. Right. You know, if you'd have wanted me to dress up, I would have mm. dressed up and brought CDs. I, I mean, you know, obviously I should have prepared more for this show. Sure. Yeah. Really? We're gonna, we're, <laughs> we've got, we're gonna, we're gonna play some classic rock, aren't we? I think we're gonna play The Who. Have we got, we got Jump, Van Halen, that's a well, classic, isn't Yeah. It? I think I've got that about five times on every driving album I brought in for you. Okay. And yeah. so, you know, Are we we're gonna play Since You've Been Gone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's cool. next? <laughs> uh, British Sea Power. Yeah, I thought yeah. we should play a couple of singles that, uh, we've enjoyed over the yeah. last year or so, and this is one of them. Carry on. Play at Canfield. And don't forget, uh, Paul Diano and Santa Claus is Coming to Town is coming on as well. Paul Diano so. doesn't snort ants, he snorts ants eaters. Carry on from, from, uh, British Sea Power on XFM 104.9. Not bad at all. Now listen, we should just uh, point out to people that, uh, we're <laughs> Carl's away, and we always slag him off because he, he provides very little. But and he's an idiot. Well, exactly, to be fair. But he's obviously off in uh, Lanza Grotti, and he's forgotten to tell us what the password is for our email, Rick. Idiot. So we can't get into the email. Uh, so we're not gonna have to use Ian's email instead. Ian.camfield at xfm.co.uk if you wanna get in touch. You're never gonna have so many emails, Ian. Really? Yeah, this right? gonna, you're gonna be looking at them all, all week. It's gonna be brilliant for <laughs> you. You're gonna feel really <laughs> popular. You know what? He described Carl as a bald little mank twat. Nice. Carl was going... Brilliant. Is that allowed? Is that all right? Yeah. Bless him. Bald little mank twat. He's back on the third, isn't he? Well, if there's one thing that that magazine's well, what was he suggesting you can't be regionalist? Yeah. What? It was he suggesting you can't be regionalist. Is that allowed? No, I just think it's a familiarity of, uh, it's just because we call him a bald little mank twat, that a national, <laughs> a national <laughs> magazine can say that. <laughs> oh, bless his little round head. Wonder what he's doing now. He's sitting in the ash, reading his, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh reading his Rich Hall book. <laughs> yeah, he, oh. spe he spent a week when he went to, uh, where was it? St. Lucia. He spent a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> throwing sand at crabs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they've even got crabs, have they, over there? <laughs> no, I think, no, There's I don't nothing. know what he's gonna do. What is he gonna do? I Suzanne, what is she gonna do? He's gonna be whinging. But it's, it's sort of like, Carl must be like, kid, you must like sit him in front of a video mm. while you go and make the dinner or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be a nightmare to, taking a pet. Has he got a little, she got a little harness for him. <laughs> to be fair though, Rick, I mean, I can't imagine you're much better <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> I've always wondered what that must be like. Cause you always need an audience. You've always got to have someone around that you can perform for, drop your trousers for. <laughs> annoy. Annoy, just generally sing and dance about. And, you know, Jane's seen it all, she's bored of you. Uh. So what, do you just do this to other people on the beach? <laughs> holiday makers, it is me. You can't believe you're not, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, do, you do, you do, do you want me to annoy <laughs> Do you want me to, do you want, do you want me to annoy you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can annoy you for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Cause yeah. then I'll get bored exactly. myself. I'll exactly. tell you what, I want some ads and after that the fairy tale in New York. Oh. Excellent. Hoax. Featuring Kirsty McCall and uh, a fairy tale of New York. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9. That's the song I think that single-handedly keeps uh, Shane McGowan in gin for another year. It must do just well though. But I'm I, sure it does. I absolutely love it. I yeah. still love it. I saw right. it on Top of the Pops too. And it's just, it's just brilliant. Mm. I mean, you he wasn't great at miming, but it didn't bother me. Sure. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was miming to a different song, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah in his yeah. head. It was great. Um, 
had a little visit in the week, Rick. I think Go you missed on. out. A little Christmas visit from, uh, I know he's a friend of yours. He's a friend of anyway. He's a friend of the nation. Go on. Um, TV, uh, illusionist Darren Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's bought a new pad. Yeah. And, uh, he just came around to tell me about it. Yeah. And, uh, it's interesting because- Somewhere uh, to keep his guns. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, um, I, I can never know quite of how much, you know, he's just playing with your mind, experimenting. But he was telling me about the place, and apparently- he say he loves you? <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a B-Day. In yeah. the, uh, in the house. Now, we were discussing B-Days because- Never um, understood that. I've never got my head around it. To this he's day- He's not I've, meant to. Well, no. <laughs> but I've never- I don't think I've ever met anyone who's used a B-Day. Oh, uh, Darren Brown does. He's known as the cleanest ass in, uh, <laughs> modern magic. Yeah. Shiny. <laughs> Shiny ass, they call him. <laughs> but, uh- but I, cause I was, we were chatting about it. I don't really know, to be truthful, I don't really know how you use them. I don't well, know- Well, I assume you just sort of go over it and let- But do you face the wall with your knees on the, on the tiles? No, or do you I face away you from the wall? No, it's sort of like you just, I don't- And no. you know it's got the little Do nozzle. you sit on it? Or do you sort of hover above it? Do you it? hover above it and just splash things onto the- No, it's a little jet, isn't it? It does it for you, doesn't but it? But is there a jet? This is what I'm wondering. Is yeah, there a jet of a, water that goes like, through, up the crack? It's like, a, it's a drinking, like a drinking fountain That's you used to have in school. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, I remember Mr. Mellows used to embarrass himself every time. I go, no! He's in the middle of Lego, Mr. Mellows! <laughs> yeah. It's not a B-Day! You're not at your French, you know, <laughs> cottage again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't- B-Day sounds French. Well, I'm assuming it's French. After, you know, I are probably so embarrassed about just sort of like squatting over a hole. Yeah. They go, well, at least we can clean it. Have they- so I haven't been to, uh, I haven't been to France for years, but are they still persevering with the they're public toilets, just with a hole in the ground? Still got, I mean, I think they have is got- Is a single Frenchman travelled anywhere else in the world? Yeah, And seen that now- This is uncomfortable. I know, my trousers go, go down to that. Delhi, and I think uh, they're uh, probably yeah. decent porcelain. I know, I can't believe it. I think they have got the flush ones now, mainly right. for the tourists. <laughs> sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah, never yeah. really understood that. But it's I'm not, you don't go in, it's not like the- cause they're literally crapping into an open sewer, aren't they? That's the French approach to the public lavatory. Do they have the bidet next to the hole? <laughs> no, no, no. The toilet is a toilet, isn't it? Right. But it's just, it's just like, it's sort of like a, it's like going in the bottom of a shower with a big hole at the bottom. Mm. But I, I don't and know- And just, do you, you, do, I mean again, not wishing to get graphic, but do you use the, uh, the bidet instead of the, the toilet paper? Is it used in conjunction with, or I, I instead mean, of? I you know what, I've, I, I, I've honestly, um, never used a bidet. Because it's not but... really a working class thing, is it? The bidet. No, but, uh, well it sort of came in with, with sort of like, um, purpose built houses, didn't it? They sort of like, shot up all over the- um, no pun intended. <laughs> All <laughs> over the sort of seventies, you know what I mean? It was like a, you know, a, a, in salmon pink, there mm. was toilet sink and B day. Yeah, we yeah, won't yeah. be using the B day. <laughs> exactly. Fill it with ice. Put some beer in that. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. None of my friends washes their arms. <laughs> there are people who refuse to touch their, you know, the the, the hole with the hands, and they only use a B day. So they throw it at a party, and there's no B day. Well, Carl doesn't like don't like feeding his bollocks for cancer because he says he doesn't like the doesn't like the texture of them. Sure. Well, so I mean, so he'd probably love a B-Day if he didn't but have to go- But are kind of upper class women who just waddle into the, the dining room <laughs> at a sophisticated <laughs> trousers around their ankles going, where's the B-Day? Where's this the- filthy. Where's the B-Day? I just, I don't know what- We used the paper. The what? I think the fish was off. I'm going berserk up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah th get me a B-Day. <laughs> yeah, what or, have you lot on the floor? Or I am climbing into the sink and turning the tap <laughs> upside down. <laughs> it's the only way I can do it. <laughs> Yeah. B-Day. Thoughts on B-Days? Have you ever used one? Well, no, you've gone to, you told me all this, but you still haven't got to the bottom of how you use them. No, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, know. I don't you know, know what, how to use it. Do they come, I asked, you need to brand, does it come with, like, instructions, like a flat pack? I think you're supposed to know. About? I think you're supposed to, you, you know, if you've bought a B-Day, the assumption is you know how to use it. Imagine someone installing it and going, there you go, there's a B-Day, go, can you show me how to use it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you like this. Well, no, no, let's go to the toilet first. <laughs> do the whole thing, I mean, otherwise I won't know in context. I'll just sit here in the corner, that's fine. Okay. You well, do, just, do, you uh, wanna, do you read a magazine when you're normally going? Well, I might do, but I mean, I don't really want to do it with you here, but how, how will I know? <laughs> exactly. What, I need to know how you transport yourself from the lavatory to the B-Day. Do you remember when we were trying to offer Carl money to have a shower with Johnny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, just some of the highlights of the year. <laughs> That's a weird thing to do! Yeah. We had it, we nearly had him there and then he didn't want us to watch. Yeah. We said, yeah. well, how we know that you've done it or not? Yeah. He went, you are definitely bent. <laughs> <laughs> That's his conclusion. <laughs> and what, what we got lined up? Well, hang on, let's just say, if, uh, if anyone's got any idea, sort of, how to use a B-Day, maybe- Any idea for anything to talk about on yeah. this show? Well, that, that doesn't involve crapping. <laughs> or farting. Yeah. We've done that. Um, yeah. We haven't, done, we haven't done little Chinese fellas or the gays yet. That's <laughs> still to come in the second hour. <laughs> Ian dot Camfield at xfm dot co dot uk. If you've got any thoughts on uh, B days or just you know lavatories generally, Richard Ashcroft on XFM. Check the meaning. I think it was out this year and we enjoyed it. So we I certainly it. had a, a thought then that you know someone like Richard Ashcroft, uh, who's really cool. I mean, I think one of our greatest rock and rollers. Really, he mm -hmm. writes great tunes, does great albums. Uh, the Verve 
you know, already I in history. Mm. I just suddenly thought of him listening to this and thinking, I wish they wouldn't play my songs because I don't want to be associated mm. with that drivel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Is, you know, most people get a buzz out of it on the radio. Do you think people say, don't, don't let Gervais Guilty by association. Do you know what I mean? They've just been, they've, I've, I, I love that song. I love Check the Mean. I thought it was a lovely song. And he's thinking, they're gonna sandwich it to been talk about little gay Chinese fellas and B-days. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna make me look What worries bad. me, Rick, is that they'll, you know, if we had to draw up some kind of list of artists who would allow us to play their songs, it's gonna be such a short list. Gary Glitter, you know, it's gonna be a few people who, you know, are slightly more shameful than us. I just so, thought of something. Um, there are a billion people in China. Mm-hmm. And I assume it's the same percentage of homosexuality occurs as it were. That turn a billion, one in ten, that means there's a hundred million little gay Chinese fellas running around. Richard Think Ashcroft, if you're listening, I apologise <laughs> for that last. Think uh, about it. Uh, <laughs> you know, you okay? War's over. I had uh, a DJ in the in the week, I won't say who it was, um, but sort of like a cheesy sort of housewife choice DJ. And he played that and he went, hmm, weird one that, isn't it? What do you think of that the first time you heard it? Strange one. John Lennon, Yoko Ono, war is over. Here's the moment at least out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Oh. What does he mean? That's exactly what I want from a DJ. <laughs> that yeah. kind of insight. <laughs> we were talking before the break about how many little uh, Chinese fellas there are. Yeah. Uh, um, Brilliant. Um, An awful lot of them. Brilliant. Good. More the merrier. Are you familiar, Rick, with the fact, the scary fact, I don't know, Camford, if you're aware of this, and Go it's on. chilling. Uh, I don't know where I've heard this from, but apparently, and this is kind of legend, I didn't just make this up, this is well mm. known, that if all the Chinese people in China, <laughs> right, no, come on, if they all jumped up and down at the same time, <laughs> apparently, this is, this is what they say, apparently it would cause a, tidal, cause a wave tidal wave that would wipe out America. That would destroy America. <laughs> I love the idea of coordinating that. Brilliant. Well, I like the idea, firstly, they don't need, um, weapons of mass destruction, they don't need nuclear weapons, because no. they got that threat They can't constantly. have them on that, you can't count, you can't count um, no. a tidal wave as a weapon of mass destruction. Or jumping. Tony Blair could send in sort of people, you know, UN people going, look out for anyone jumping. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All they need is an immense sort of skipping rope. Oh yeah, once a uh, little fella in Japan holding yeah, one end, exactly. little fella in Russia holding the other, <laughs> exactly, yeah. and they go on your marks. You'd have a lot of coordination over that one. Little Maybe like someone like Mr. Tripping. Motivator, kind of coordinating it all from yeah, the top yeah. of the wall, sort yeah. of looking down. The Chinese got, equivalent. Yeah, the Chin yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, be because I think that's why they built the wall. I think that's why they built the to Great jump Wall. Off the wall. <laughs> exactly. They just climb on that wall. That's the way it's done. That's the threat. And that's why America started the space race. Yeah. Because you can see it from space. Exactly. <laughs> so they go. They're up there um, monitoring constantly. This is uh, Eagle to uh, Houston. There's lots of little Chinese fellas about to jump. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is Houston. Are they wearing them? We just need hats? to confirm they're Chinese. Are they wearing <laughs> those? <laughs> are they wearing those comical hats that look a bit like a lampshade? They, yes, are. they are. They are. <laughs> Because <laughs> well, if I was the uh, if I was the leader of China, who, what is the name of the? What, is, it, is he the king of China? We're so ill-educated. Is aren't it we? the king of China? The the, the is czar that of China? King, is it? What is it? The, is Chairman Mao still there? Is he still Chairman? Up, someone? Uh, chairman? Someone else? Probably the yeah. new chairman. Or chairwoman? Don't be sexist. <laughs> And, uh, Actually, you know when I said there's uh, um, a billion people in China, so there's hundred million little gay Chinese fellas. Yeah. Someone phoned up to say half of them are women. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Straight on the phone with that. Well, I meant I meant the little lesbian fellas or little gay fellas. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't being sexist. <laughs> but if I'm I just saying there's probably a hundred million little gay Chinese people. What worries me, Rick, is if I was the premier of China, or if it was some of the people I went to school with. Is it with, premier? Oh, whoever he is, the king of China. <laughs> I was the king of China, <laughs> right? Um, isn't he the king of China and king and I? Or is that he's somewhere else? Isn't he? That's Siam, isn't it? I don't know. We're is that not, not in China? <laughs> is that not in China? <laughs> we're not. We're Where's not, Siam? Then? We're not. Uh, it's Ceylon now, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know, or is that? Oh my God! Someone educated listening must be tearing their hair yeah. out, Screaming listening to three buffoons but listen, in a room. If I was the king of China, let's assume he's the king of China. Okay, yeah, you'd um, be tall. But you know when you sometimes you've had a few drinks, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've done that thing where you order a pizza for someone, you know, a mate or whatever, or send a taxi around to their house, something like that. Yeah. What I do is I just phone up George W. Bush and go, seriously, mate, you better send some stuff over money and that, and videos, because yeah. seriously, they're all outside now. One, two. Yeah, you know, and you can freak them out. Send us some knives and forks because yeah. I am fed up with these sticks. Yes, yeah. it's ridiculous. I don't know why we're still sticking with them. I can't, I can't pick up the tiniest little bit of chicken. It's crazy. It's rubbish. It's, yeah. Send us some cut. I'm having a nightmare eating yogurt. <laughs> 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 oh dear. This is a uh, 104.9 Racist FM. <laughs> Absolutely. Jonah Louie. 
Yeah. Should we apologise for that? Not at all, no. It's right, isn't Stand it? by it, yes. Yeah, that good. was his follow up to You'll Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties. Yeah. One of my favourite lyrics. She was into French cuisine, but I ain't no cordon on blur. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to playing that in the new year. What happened to B.A. Robertson? Don't he know. knocked it off. I was standing in the corner and the ball came across. What was the other one he did? I don't know, I don't know. We're not as old as you. Oh no. And this oh, is all gobbledygook to us. <laughs> XFM 104.9, that's yeah. Jonah Louie. Yeah, you're not listening to classic gold. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly. I've still got my own teeth. I, right. uh, I think, Rick, I was the subject of a, uh, Christmas con in the week. What, you mean, you, you bought something for four pounds, then sort of for four pound, <laughs> three pounds ninety as you walked out? That would make me livid. Because I've seen you oh. really livid. I'm absolutely furious. When I bought my PlayStation, I saw I could get it for a fiver cheaper down the road. I was absolutely And feeling. you'd already walked to about nineteen places, oh, gotcha. I remember. I actually but left you after about an hour. Yeah. Can no, I do. I'm furious because I got to get a bargain. I, I hate think the feeling that I'm being ripped off. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I'm loving online shopping. Oh, the savings I'm making, Rick. Really? It's crazy. Really? Getting 15, 20 quid off some things. Is it really? Oh, amazing. But th these things, can I might point out, are like Jaguars and, uh, mm. you know, <laughs> yeah, Mitsubishi <laughs> cars. Exactly. Yeah, but it's no, worth shopping round. No, this was not so much a con. This, well, it was a con, but it wasn't so much one of those just a missed bargain. Yeah. Um, doorbell rings, answer it. It's a couple of girls. They must have been. Thirteen or fourteen, maybe? Now, I've always had a problem with teenagers. I'm intimidated by teenagers. In it, case they call you a dork or something. Well, I mean, I told you before, I was walking down the street once, and, uh, two guys coming towards me. I mean, real losers. Do you know what I mean? Glasses, the spots, greasy hair. Do you know, really pathetic. And I was sniggering to myself, I was thinking, look at those losers. And as I passed them, I heard one of them look at me and say to his mate, look at that geek. <laughs> <laughs> I was furious. I was thinking, I'm allowed to call you a nerdlinger, but gee, I don't expect it back. I was really... Furious and like upset, and so as I say, these teen teenagers are at the door, and they were quite aggressive, g too aggressive, quite aggressive girls, and they had a piece of A4 paper, and they went, "We're Sponsors. doing um, doing a sponsored thing." Yeah. But I don't, I didn't quite catch what it was they were doing that was sponsored. I think they they sort of fudged that they went, "We're doing a sponsor." Oh yeah. And I went right, and they went, uh, "Do you want to sponsor us?" Boy, have they picked on the wrong person. Uh, well, I and I sort of, <laughs> I was a bit intimate. I didn't want, I didn't know, I don't know why I said no. I was worried maybe it was part of some kind of, you know, hidden camera <laughs> show, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. And, uh, so I said, yeah, all right, I'll sponsor you. So they handed me this form, and I think, I always thought you were supposed to have quite an official looking form for any sponsorship thing. But this was literally a piece of A4 torn out of a note. Oh, it was the back of a Gareth Gates poster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> With some blue tag on it. Yeah, well, and, it said, and, it, and I looked at it, and I didn't really absorb it, but it, it had things like, you know, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Smith. You yeah. know, five quid. Yeah. And then no one's actual address, just Finchley Road, you know, da, 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 nothing too specific. Yeah. So I wrote my name on and, um, put down three quid. A lot of people were giving them fivers, but I thought, you know, I'm not made of money, it's Christmas. <laughs> I got my gifts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. so I gave, gave them a fiver and asked for change. Yeah, yeah. well, I gave, I gave them three quid. I said, I'll, I'll get sponsor you for three quid. Best of luck. And they went, can we have the money? And I said, well, aren't you supposed to do the thing? She, and they, and the woman just looked, the girl just looked at me, she just went, no. <laughs> so I gave her three quid. But what difference does it make? <laughs> well, I'm assuming, though, that it's not going to any charity. But it's no it, sponsor But I know, but then, I'm not being funny, the, the, the charity that it's not going to, you wouldn't have given to it anyway. <laughs> it's true enough. So all that's happened is, you're three quid but down. But I'm three quid down. Yeah, but if it would have gone to charity, you'd be three quid down. The fact that it hasn't gone to charity doesn't matter, because you wouldn't have given it to charity. Yeah, but so if it had gone to charity, Rick, I'd have felt a little bit superior, a little bit smug. That would have kept me going for another six months. Whereas now, it's just gone to a couple of weeks off the street, you know, who are scamming people. Possibly old people, Rick, and that's who I feel sorry for. They've not got a great deal of money. That's why well, I'm not worried about myself, I've got a bit of cash, but back the old people. Yeah. Although you, know, you are three quid down, which probably still hurts for me. <laughs> it's still stinging, that's why I just like to tell you now, get off your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's Merry Christmas. Thing. Yeah. Just be but careful what, uh, what- If you're living up in North London, be careful, there's two girls that are going around, I expect, you know, they might come to your door. But they might be, wary. be genuine. No, I don't think so. No? They were common, they were very common. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Was it, was, was the giveaway things like, you know, Santa Claus had given ten pounds, <laughs> exactly. Tony Blair had given a quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean, yeah, I think, I think you were conned, mate. Yeah. Right. Won't get fooled again by the Who. Ian, I'm gonna ask your expert opinion. Is that not one of the greatest rock songs of all time? Yeah, if you'd have played the proper version of it. I know, but it's six and a half minutes, and we usually do, but we just thought, you know, it's Christmas, people wanna 
you know, him and more Jonah Louie. Yeah, but we could we could have played like the full eight minutes rather than making the show sound like strolling round your local Asda with the Christmas songs with a little that bit more to racism. Me sounds like in. fighting talk. You want a rock challenge, Canfield? <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna rock this out the last four minutes. Can we put Can we put Keith Moon in in the uh, model? I was gonna ask you. He's my favourite drummer of all time. Will yeah. you go along with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So we got oh we got we got Lemmy and Keith Moon. Yeah. Are we making yeah. up a kind of super rock band here? Oh, we could like do. That. We could make nah, a sort of rock that's, band. that's far too passe. You just call it the monolith rock, it sounds more stupid. Okay, okay um, so we've got Lemmy and Moon. Yeah. We just, we need three more. So we need two no, more need two more of rock, the and then one to stand astride it, like the metal angel of death. Now, uh, <laughs> Ian, you've, cos you've, you've, you've hung out with some of the big rock names, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere with this, I was just, I'm intrigued. Tell me some of the people you've, you've hung out with. You've hung out with Maiden, have you? I've hung out with Maiden. Maiden don't you? I've been, fly, I've been flying with Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And have you, I mean- Only took us three attempts to land at Gatwick a few weeks ago. But I don't know much really? about you, yeah. uh, Ian, are you, are you, are you someone who lives the rock and roll excess lifestyle? Are you kind of drink and drugs, is that your thing? I like to be kind of, you know, on the edge, having a look at what's going on inside. Right, I don't quite know what that means. Well, yeah, I've, It's I've... the way they talk, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what I mean, you know, because I mean, some of those rockers, they're hard living boys. Can you keep up with them? Do you, you know, you up till four in the morning? Oh, <laughs> four in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> Four, four in which morning? Hey, daddy oh man. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going out about four in the morning. Yeah. Carl reckons the gays got late. Yeah. <laughs> it, what, he played, his famous song is The Killing of Georgie, right? Oh, right? And he went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been, you know, going out a bit earlier? <laughs> yeah, well, no, fair point. Yeah. Is that song time specific then? Uh, no, no, but he reckons he probably got, because uh, he was out late. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> he, uh, 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 he said there's one that works here, sometimes he doesn't go out till midnight. <laughs> but, you know, I imagine you a little bit like that, uh, little boy in the film Almost Famous, when you're on tour with the rock legends. Do you know what I mean? You're like, you know, the little kid there, you, maybe the doors are being closed in your face, are they, as they go berserk? Yeah, well, well, there, yeah when, I, when I started, yeah, okay, yeah, but, yeah. but now, you know, I insist I see you as one of theirs. Yeah, yeah, I access all areas, slamming that, you know, I mean, I can enter mm -hmm. venues now with a big bottle of Jack Daniels, I don't get stopped. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Really? What, and, but seriously, have you, without naming names, obviously, what uh, excess have you seen? Have you witnessed anything? Or have people calmed down now? Are, they, is it, are, they, are these rockers clean living now? <sighs> Depends who you're talking about. Sure. Yeah. Is there anything going on like the days of, uh, you know, Ozzy and, and, uh, Motley Crue? I haven't seen, uh, well, I haven't seen any Red Snappers, like with, uh, with Jimmy Page. Do you know that story of mine? No. I can't talk about the, it. The, so that's, the that's, the that's forget about that, yeah. Oh, was it, is it disgusting? It, well, yeah. Oh, but is it worse than talking about B-Days and Ricky's Farts? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. I know. You wouldn't want the instruction manual as to what happened with the Red Snapper, like right. you do with the B-Day. Sure, 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 sure. Oh. Um... God. But don't, 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 as I say, don't name names. Obviously, you know, there's a sort of client, you know, doctor confidentiality or whatever that you Yeah, well, I saw, I, I saw... We, I, we I, know there's no one listening. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It won't go further than this it's studio. Right. I, I, I saw a member of, uh, a very big band, um, play the Astoria, uh, recently, and they turned up at the Astoria about 15 minutes before they were going on stage, right? right. And, uh, someone said to them, is it good to be playing the Astoria? To which he turned around and went, uh, oh, right, are we in London? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And th this person then... <laughs> it wasn't Daniel O'Donnell, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, uh, I can't even think of the Libertines. No, it's not a very big... Huge no. band, is it? No. 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 Bigger than that. Bigger yeah, than okay. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, what other rock and roll excess do you, do you want? Oh, I was told once that if you stay up for two days, the best thing to do is eat some yogurt. This is just like we're going to having tips now. Sure. Yeah, you know. So if it, that's apparently the best thing at the end of the excess, you need some yogurt. So always right. keep some in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. No, chopsticks are no good. No, no that that is. Yeah, yeah so, so don't, whatever you do, don't go on a bender in China, because otherwise you'll be screwed, right? No, there's no benders in China. Mm. <laughs> oh, there are. There's <laughs> about <laughs> 100 million. Yeah. Another tune that I enjoyed this year, Rick. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. I'm fascinated yeah. to find out. Loving it. Loving Jay -Z it. Jay-Z and Farrell and, uh, Frontin. What do you think, uh, Canfield? Darkness number one? Yeah, well, they cheated, didn't they? Because they went and did their signing mm. at HMV, uh, yesterday, so they getting, like, an hour of extra, extra sales. Why is Just that cheating, so well, you know, I don't know, well, I suppose Gary Jules could have turned up at Virgin down the road, couldn't he, and, and yeah. you know. I okay, think, well, then, in that I case, they're that going... that deserves to be sort of number one, because at least it's, it, it's potentially a sort of evergreen, sort of Slade-type classic, and they are the biggest sort of band around at the moment. Canfield, what are your thoughts? You love rock. What do you make of The Darkness? 
it's all right. They've been around for a while now. Sure. You know, another year, maybe. But they're, they're all the, the ingredients of everything you like, I imagine. They've got a bit of glam, they've got a bit of queen, they've got a bit of ACDC. It's all in there. You've got a bit of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny. It's, I, 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 they're a good fan band, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I mean, right. they're essentially just too close to novelty. But then so was Slade, in a way. Slade have only got this, this credibility resurgence in retrospect. At the time, they were a pop band that just essentially were for teenagers and thugs. I'm yeah. not sure Canfield's gonna be championing Slade, though, up there in the same way that he champions the Maiden. But you gotta, <laughs> you gotta appreciate what, what Hold has done, surely. Yeah, I appreciate what Hold has done. But they, but they only became cool, didn't they, when Oasis covered them? Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I genuinely always liked Slade, and I've still got a soft spot for him. But, yeah. um, yeah, The Darkness, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. At least The Darkness weren't as irresponsible for the kids of today, though, because the amount of spelling mistakes that Slade were responsible for at school in the 70s with was the atrocious. Oh. the Zs in. Rubbish. Um, Ian, I'm gonna have to ask you for our third pillar of rock before the ad break. Right, well, we need, um, who have we got, so we've got- We've got Lemmy yeah, and Moon. Right, okay. I think we need to put in, uh, we need a guitarist in there, we should maybe put in Keith Richards. I'm a little bit worried about the health scare, cause the kind of air pollution around any venue that this band might play, mm -hmm. with like Lemmy and, and, and Keith Richards there, yeah, you know. See, I'm, I'm, up. I'm surprised at Keith Richards, cause I wouldn't have thought it was heavy enough for you, but the Stones have done enough to get in the, the annals of rock. Yeah. Okay, let's play some ads. Quick question. <laughs> Do you actually speak like this, Ian? What? This, this, is this is your real this voice. This is real voice, yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do your, do your, um, uh, daytime sort of voice, the X-list voice. Say, say it's fast, it's just coming up to 20 past 2 on XFM 104.9. Um, after the break, um, w uh, we've got Feeder. Say that. It's just coming up to 20 past 2 on XFM 104.9. These are the ads. <laughs> XFM. <laughs> that song is. Uh, don't know about that. It could sound like he's saying something to do with bell ends. Well, yeah. W what? Heaven forbid. What? You think he meant that? Did he? Probably. No. Uh, that's the darkness on uh, XFM 104.9. Bell end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what other rude words are there? Cock. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that is rude. Yeah. Um, especially now, at, especially at Christmas. Especially at Christmas. <laughs> it's yeah. It's time for families. Oh no! Now listen. Time for family. Come. Now, Ian. Yes. Who is your fourth? We need a lead singer in this mega group, the Monoliths of Rock. Uh, who we got? Lemmy. We've got, we got, we got, we got Keith Richards on guitar. We've got Lemmy on bass. Yeah. We've got Keith Moon on skins. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's terminology coming out there. Yeah. yeah. Who's doing the Vox? Uh, Who's given Golden Tonsils Award? Uh. Robert Plant. He's gone for Plant. He's yeah. gone for Plant. A lot of trap the, names there. There is the group. The lineup is Mo Moon, uh, Lemmy, Richard, Plant. Okay. Now a competition, Steve. Name that. Name that group. Okay. What's the best? The best heaviest rock name ever. Sure. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> is obviously not a name that already exists. No. Okay. Um, my Any mate of mine came up with. I think it was um, a Brain Hammer. <laughs> which, which right. I like. Um, yeah. Velvet Nazi 666. <laughs> sure. So we want the heaviest, yeah. most mental piece of death metal, head banging, bleeding out of your brains rock axe attack. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Christ on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage. Oh, look at you! <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. That would freak out the Met Loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cheeky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now listen. They need a manager. They need someone who could introduce them. They need someone to stand astride them. Who is the leader now? Who is the king of all that rocks? Well, it's obviously Tommy Vance, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what worries me, Rick? I, we've said Vance a lot today. I'm wondering if people, the kids today, do they know Tommy Vance? Are they what do you think that, Ian? If they don't know, they shouldn't be listening. Okay. <laughs> Fair so, Vance is their manager. He needs to, they're on at Wembley. He's got them on at Wembley. They're, they've got a, they're, they're the greatest rock band of all time. We need the name. Please, please welcome to the stage. What are they called? We'll Phone uh, in, email in, um, and the prize, we're gonna get some- We'll rummage through the bins as Get Carl some, get does. some old tat like Carl does, we'll some VHSs, in. some <laughs> CDs, greatest air guitar Peter ever. Peter Max. Yeah. What's the- do we need to give out the numbers and well, stuff? Well, can email, don't can't they? Don't get on the phone, you don't want to talk to me, seriously. <laughs> no, you don't want to, you know, you know when, uh, 
what, what's his name says to Agent Starling as she's going to meet Hannibal, don't let him inside your head. Yeah. Don't talk to the listeners, Ian. <laughs> exactly, it's very much the same Please thing. don't let, don't I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, concerned that my email's gonna be besieged by people sending you links to how to clean out the B-Day. Mm. Um, well that's <laughs> alright. But, but what's sure the, the most, the most mental head bleeding, banging brain hammer operation <laughs> this band can be called? Call what, in. Uh, Rick, cause I've always, it always amuses me if you, I mean I know it's cruel to put you on the spot, but so some of your former band names have always amused me. Well, the worst. Uh, <laughs> 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 the worst one. Well, I'll, I'll just Ricky leave this. Has a, Ricky's had a number of bands over the years. What was the uh, the worst one? Uh, ready? Re get ready to play that record because I don't want I don't want any aftermath. No, hang on, before you tell me, what was the one? Because you keep these pictures of you like when you were new romantic keep on being published. But, that was Shauna dancing. Yeah, but someone That's pretty bad. But some, someone told me they were like, oh, ask him about when he tried to be Bon Jovi. Can you imagine such a thing? I know, I know the name you're thinking of. Right, here we go. Play the record. Immediately I say this. <laughs> Ready? The Sacred Hearts. <laughs> Play a record. Blair on XFM 104.9. I forget the name of that track, but it's good. Good song. Thanks very much. Oh, good song. Yeah. All oh, right. I, I just thought you were complimenting giving his opinion. Right, yeah. go on. The what? Are we still on the air? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Merry Christmas. We got someone on the line. Oh, right, right, right. He's here. Who's that? Ricky! Ricky! It's, uh, yeah, go on. It's Jonathan, how are you? Good. It's, 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 it's only TV, it's Jonathan Ross. Ross, turn your radio down, you idiot. I'm here. I like to, uh, I haven't got a radio. What are you talking about? We can hear the feedback. Well, I haven't got it. It's not my fault. It's your incompetent radio station. And know. also, didn't you hear we said, don't call in, we don't want to speak to the listeners. What's, yeah, well, are you, listener. uh, I'm not a listener. I'm a visitor to your shows. I'm special. You know that for a while. I know you're special. Right. Yeah, exactly. What, have you, have you got a name for the band? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Blump. <laughs> 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 B L U M P. I tell you for what, you can't have a normal word. If it's the monolith band of all time, if it's the B, you can't have a regular word. It doesn't make sense. How can you have a regular word? All these ideas you've come up with are rubbish. You need a word which only stands for that one thing. No one's heard it before. No one will use it again. Blump. I can't help but feel that that's a more appropriate name for maybe one of Ricky's bands. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I, I love seeing that picture of him in that band you see everywhere these days. <laughs> he was like a, a girl. He was like a little girl in a suit. <laughs> It's like a girl, a little dyke at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It's got to be the, ke the kettle calling the pot black. Right, you know, I've always got nothing but 100% heterosexual. You, we, we're not sure about that. There's not anything wrong with it. I know that, but look at you. <laughs> oh, yeah, to get that in, there's not anything wrong with it. I'm Jonathan Ross. Oh, dear. Uh, I, was, uh, I was thinking the other day, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. In the comedy awards, yes, sir. you and I say some awful things about poor, poor celebrities, poor has been celebrities with coke addictions and and yeah, fat lips and faces that have been, that, that where surgery's gone wrong and that everything. You, you, and that when they're on the show, they're going, oh, you yeah. look lovely. Yeah, oh, I'm nice so them. Good. I'm nice to them to their face, but obviously when I'm not with them, I like to let my true feelings be known. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is what's wrong with that? I tell you what, you can get anything off your chest you want on this show. Any celebrities you want to talk about? There's no one listening. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, just between me and you. A lot of people listen. They listen to my show, and after they've had a few hours of you know good laughs, they like something bland to just call them down afterwards. So they flip over. We know this happens. Did you um, uh, did you mention my um, DVD on your radio show? You know what? Show? I forgot to. I forgot oh, to mention. It. Christ! I, forgot to mention it. I meant to mention by the office, but I forgot to mention it. And then I thought afterwards, it's not like he needs the cash, is it? You know, it's <laughs> there not. We go. Like, it's not like he needs it. It's not like it is, but he's probably earned more money in a short space. You're like a lottery winner and you've got about as much taste. You're like one of those burglars who's won the lottery. <laughs> I have. I'm dressed <laughs> like an Albanian <laughs> window cleaner at the moment. A burglar from Reading who won the lottery and now what's he, he's fritting it away on what I'm... I do feel lovely. sorry for my neighbours. I've moved into a, you know, really nice place. Now, it, I feel like it's the hillbillies. <laughs> no, it's nice he's moved in though because it's nice. He's given them something to sort of talk about behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> you've right. united the whole block. Right, go, go and play with some Japanese wind-up toys now, I'm going home to play uh, Mario Double Dash with my son. It's going to be a good afternoon. I uh, phoned you once after I finished my show. It's about five minutes past three. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I don't mind if you, you know, I said, you, uh, I said, how are you doing? And you went, it's brilliant. You said, you said, this is what you said. You went, everyone's out. Jane's taking the kids out. I've already masturbated twice and I'm playing with a new Japanese toy. I'm, uh, I'm masturbating now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kings of Leon, Wasted Time on XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was sidetracked there, but well, just uh, some of the band names. That and now, in. now listen, I want to put in two of my own. I want to win that pile of tat, <laughs> tat out there, right? I've got two names here, okay? Would you just remind people in case they've just tuned in? 
Oh Watch yeah, Ian Donald. Canfield has chosen his, uh, a mega band of all time. He's got Keith Moon on drums, he's got Lemmy on bass, he's got Keith Richard on guitar, he's got, um, who have you got singing? Robert Plant. A Robert Plant. And their manager is Vance. <laughs> and he's, but he needs to announce them at Wembley Arena. They're already sold out, they're at number one in the album charts. <laughs> they're the greatest rock band of all time. And I, I've got two suggestions. Okay. What about this? Please welcome to the stage. Tungsten Lung Hemorrhage. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Please welcome to the stage. God Dildo. God Dildo, interesting. Nice juxtaposition there of God, <laughs> the almighty creator, and a dildo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice yeah. use of uh, <laughs> some contrasting imagery there. Yeah. yeah. Powerful and topical. Tungsten lung hemorrhage. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a couple also on the email, um, people didn't really include their names, but who cares. Um, please welcome to the stage, Balls of Steel. Well, balls of Steel, yeah. yeah. And we've, we've had like, Brain Hammer. Yeah. Brain Hammer's good. Lots I like of brain, brain related stuff. Quite related liking stuff. the idea of tumour fish. Juma fish, Juma I like. Juma fish is very good. I like Juma fish. I just wonder if there's one more contender. I don't know who this <laughs> was even that phoned in with it, but possibly it's topical. <laughs> Deathly hem. Yeah. <laughs> Deathly Hem. It's brilliant. Oh, it's Deathly Hem. Please welcome to the stage. Deathly Hem. It's Deathly Hem. Who's that? We've got to give it to I don't know who that was. Oh, well, if you came up with Deathly Hem, email again. Deathly Hem. It's the greatest name for the greatest rock band of all time. Will you please welcome to the stage Deathly Hem? It's Golden Tonsils. Isn't it? I went to, uh, I was gonna go see him once at the Cameron London World about, uh, a year ago, and they had this sign up, right, <laughs> saying that Graham Bonnet, who sung that song, had cancelled, right, and it said, God willing, he'll be performing tomorrow. And just in case you thought he cancelled because maybe no one bought any tickets, the doctor's certificate was beneath <laughs> the cancellation <laughs> Brilliant. Rude. Well, we've sung that a couple of times drunk, haven't we, Ian? Yeah, but, at the yeah, top of our voice. We have done it. It is the best. Uh, ever. Yeah. It is. Ben won- Ben has won whatever you're giving away. Yeah. Ben a big came up with death, death crap that we fought. Yeah, Deathly Hem. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, if you are in a rock band and you're looking for a name and you think you deserve that name, then, you know, write- write to us. It, we wanna know that you're really heavy and we- and A and Canford would officially hand over the deeds of the name Bethlehem. Deathlyhem? Deathlyhem, yeah. 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 Deathlyhem. They only play at Christmas, you only play, like, big venues at Christmas and it's all things about, like, fighting- like good versus evil, yeah. God versus the devil. Uh, it's, it, you got to write songs like that, yeah. Yeah. Deathly Hem on XFM 104.9. Perhaps oh. that the debut should certainly be a concept album based yeah. on the Nativity play. Yeah. Brilliant. Nativity, Brilliant. Nativity, Brilliant. Nativity, yeah. That'd be just good. the whole kind of Old Testament in kind of rock form. Yeah. <laughs> with like, it'd be extraordinary. Yeah, it, it, it's the battle for humanity. Yeah. It's called. Um, humanity, manatee, and it's a fight in the ocean of hell. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I'd like to see a serpent. Maybe picture That'd somewhere. That'd be a serpent, isn't it? Track four. Track four. Track four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we should give massive props and suitable regards to Ian Canfield. He's come and he's pressed the buttons. He's, he's stood in for an idiot. Brilliantly. <laughs> yeah. He has so. stood in for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the retarded It's a shame ball. that he's not- you've not displayed some of the usual incompetence that we've come to love and expect from Carl. It's a shame. Okay, well, okay, you well, it's just, You are the greatest DJ in the world, though. The way you sort of, like, drop Press these- buttons. It, it, but, you know- Every yeah, time I've pressed a button off air, Ricky's been going, oh, what great DJ. It is great, yeah. so he it ends it, he's just, no, it's just brilliant. I mean, we're lucky if we can talk with the mic on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title, not talk over a record. Oh, we did, okay. today we did some great links during the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, Jonathan Ross, uh, masturbating. <laughs> live. Yeah. On there. Just, just looking back at some of the highlights of you this You don't get that show. on Capital Gold, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like Tony Blackburn getting a call from Fluff Freeman going, all right, mate, I'm knocking one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, have a lovely Christmas. Have a bloody great Christmas. Have mate. a bloody great Christmas. It's the best of next week. Yep. Um, the best of the last few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> with some tat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that Carl's put together. We're Look back in January. We're playing some of our favourite songs of the year. I'm looking week. forward to seeing, um, Pilker's Tan. Pilker's and back, from his holiday. covered in ash from the beach. <laughs> yeah. And we're back on the, uh, third. I believe. But Ian, do you want to introduce one? This is- this is Ian's choice for the day. Yeah. Um, we'll see you, uh, next week in spirit and then uh, we'll be back on the third with, uh, Pilkers. Over to you, Camp. Yeah, enough of Jonah Louis. This is Paul Diano, ex of Iron Maiden, doing, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town.